Hey guys how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. Today we will see what if Naruto returns with a wife Sakura bashing. If you enjoy then please like share and do comments. Sorry. Excuse me. A yellow streak apologized as it rushed through the crowded streets of Konoha on the cool, crisp morning. Onlookers stared in wide-eyed wonder before they could register what or who exactly it was that was disturbing them, but once they realized exactly who it was, most of them merely grinned and shook their heads before continuing their way. Look out! Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze sped through the winding roads like a man possessed. It wasn't more than five minutes ago that he had received news that his wife of five years had gone into labor. He probably vanished before the startled eyes of his sparring partner, Rock Lee, who thought he had used a teleportation jutsu. The answer was much simpler than that as the blonde shinobi forced as much chakra to his feet and legs as possible, disappearing in a burst of speed and a cloud of dust. In that five minutes time, he had managed to cross most of the village hidden in the leaves, and was now quickly closing in on the center of town. Despite his rush, he still remembered his manners, and apologized as he blazed a trail across the town. Coming through, the hyperactive ninja yelled as he approached a rather large crowd of morning shoppers that had at time decided to visit Konoha's famous market square. Quickly assessing that situation like the experienced ninja he was, Naruto came to the conclusion he was screwed, until he spied a nearby park bench. A foxy grin split his face as he veered toward the bench and, despite the fact that there were a few people sitting on it, planted his foot on the back, launching himself toward the nearest rooftop. The young couple that sat there screamed in protest as he flew away. Sorry, watch it, you fucking jerk. Ino Yamanaka bellowed as she lurched to her feet and shook her fist at the quickly retreating blonde. Turning to her teammate, she watched as Choji Akamichi scrambled to recover the bag of chips he had dropped when Naruto blew through. What the hell is his problem? You got me, the heavy set ninja replied as he looked at the devastation before him, a pout twisting his chubby face just look at what he did to my chips. It isn't like Naruto to ruin food like that. That's because, wheeze, Naruto isn't exactly, puff puff, himself right now, gasp. A voice called out from behind, causing them to turn and stare at the figure of the third member of their team, Shikamaru Nara, who was bent over at the waist, trying to inhale huge gobs of air. Damn, that fucker can move fast. What do you mean by that? Ino asked, her curiosity quickly overshadowing her anger. Ino was one of the biggest gossips in Konoha, and any little bit of information she could get made her extremely happy. The platinum blonde watched as her friend fell to his butt, then to his back, sprawling out in the middle of the roadway. It means that Sakura, Weez, is having their baby, the dark-haired Nara panted, doing his best to ignore the girlish squeal that suddenly erupted from his friend. Glancing upward toward the offending sound, he watched as Ino jumped up and down like a schoolgirl while hugging Choji around the neck quickly causing the large man to turn blue from lack of oxygen. Troublesome, Shizun, Naruto hollered as he burst through the doors of Konoha General, causing everyone to jump at the sheer volume of noise the Kayubi container made in his excited state. Getting no answer, he sprinted over to the nurse's desk, Excuse me, Mariko? Can you tell me what room Sakura Namikaze is in? Sakura? Sure, the nurse answered quickly, pulling a clipboard off the wall. Sakura was still one of the top medics at Inkonoha, and just about everyone in the hospital knew her, as well as her famous husband. It was general knowledge in town the Hokage had made him her de facto heir. She's up on the fourth floor, room 418. Thanks, Mariko, he replied, giving her a goofy grin as he turned and blazed down the hall, leaving a trail of disrupted paper and patience. He vaulted up the stairs and disappeared from sight in the blink of an eye leaving the nurse laughing at his actions, no matter how disruptive they were. All new fathers were the same, after all. Within the space of a heartbeat, Naruto had cleared all four flights of stairs and had quietly entered the maternity ward. He had learned his lesson long ago about being loud and rowdy on that particular floor. He still remembered the beatdown Tsunade, Shizun, and his wife had given him when he burst in one day and awakened every single baby that was in the nursery. Who know that many screaming babies could be that loud, anyway? Shaking his head of that memory, he quickly sought out Shizun, who he knew would have handled Sakura's case personally. He caught up with her outside room 418. Shizun? How Sakura? Naruto asked earnestly, his eyes filled with worry. 
He and Sakura had been married for a number of years before they had decided to start a family. Everything went well at first, but Sakura had developed some problems about halfway through her pregnancy, causing her to cut back drastically on her medical work. This, in turn, drove his wife crazy, having to stay at home all the time. How far along is she? Huh? Oh, Naruto. The medical nen started as she stripped herself of the soiled doctor's gown and gloves she was wearing. Yeah, Sakura and the baby are just fine. You can go in now if you want. She, she had the baby already? I just got word she was in labor. I know it didn't take me that long to get here, the blonde choked. He was looking forward to being there when his child was born, and he began to curse himself for being so slow. It's not that, Naruto, Shizun calmly stated, doing her best to reassure the young man that she looked at like a little brother, her water broke several hours ago, but she was too weak to move and call anyone. Sasuke went by to check on her like you always ask him to do, when he discovered her. He rushed her here as fast as possible. By the time we got her to a room, the baby's head was already crowning. It was a good thing Sasuke got her here when he did. Naruto visibly relaxed. Sasuke, thank God. Naruto sighed in relief. In the year and a half that he had been back, Sasuke had been a godsend for the Namikaze family. He was the first one that had congratulated the couple when they announced that they were having a baby, as well as the one who volunteered to look after Sakura while Naruto was out on missions or training. Sasuke was the one who suggested what the problem was with Sakura when she took a turn for the worse during the pregnancy. My mom had the same problem when she was pregnant with Itachi and I. Sasuke had told Lady Tsunade and Naruto when Sakura collapsed in the Hokage's office one day, several months back. Much to everyone's surprise, his diagnosis was correct, causing Tsunade to order Sakura home and to bed rest for the remainder of her pregnancy. Sakura shot both Sasuke and Naruto a withering glare upon hearing this. She was not a happy camper, and she made sure her teammates knew all about it. See, I told you that he wasn't as bad as everyone claimed he was, Naruto said, giving Shizune a thumbs up before giving the medical nin a hug and turning to the door to his wife's room. Naruto grinned when he remembered back to when he finally tracked Sasuke down and managed to break the genjutsu that Madara Uchiha had placed Sasuke under. Between the two of them, and their summons, they managed to defeat not only Madara, but Pain and the rest of the Akatsuki as well. He smiled when he remembered the looks on Sakura's and Tsunade's when he and Sasuke stumbled through the gates of Konoha, supporting each other. It took a lot of fancy talking and pleading to keep Tsunade from executing the last Uchiha on the spot. As it was, Sasuke still ended up spending a couple of months in jail until the Hokage and the council decided his fate. He was finally reinstated as a ninja of the leaf, but he was still listed as a genin, and would continue to be until he proved his loyalty to the village once more. Sasuke finally proved his worth when forces of Otto attacked, led by his old team. Naruto and Sasuke stood back to back outside Konoha's walls and slaughtered most of the invasion force, including the leaders Kabuto, Suigetsu, and Jugo. Sakura and Tsunade smashed Karen into meat paste when she tried to attack the Hokage Tower. The rest of the Otto Nens chose the better part of valor and ran for the hills, never to be seen again. Sasuke was immediately promoted to Jonin and joined the rest of Team 7 in the upper tiers of Konoha's ninja ranks. The only ones missing were Kakashi and Sai, both having been slaughtered by Kabuto early in the fighting. Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura and Yamato mourned their passing, but continued on with their lives. It wasn't too long after that battle that Sakura decided she wanted a baby, which brings us up to the present. If you say so, Naruto, Shizun replied to the retreating back of everyone's favorite blonde ninja before continuing on to finish her paperwork before heading to the Hokage's office, if you say so. Naruto's heart was in his throat when he slowly opened the door and spied his wife lying asleep on the bed before him. She looked so exhausted, causing him to feel so bad, knowing that he was the reason for it. He wished that he had listened to his gut and stayed home that morning, rather than listening to his wife who sent him out of the house to work off some of his nervous energy. Her pink tresses were plastered to her forehead from the sweat of having the baby. Naruto noticed Sasuke was sitting beside her and holding her hand, the two of them sleeping peacefully. Wow, that must have really wore you two out, Naruto whispered as he went over to the sink and wet down a washcloth before returning to his wife's side and began to lovingly wipe down her face. 
He looked down on her beautiful face as he wiped the sweat from her brow and he couldn't believe his luck. Of all the goals that he had set for himself, the fact that he got Sakura Haruno to be his girlfriend at first and then his wife was the one that he thought was the furthest from becoming reality. It had happened not too long after he had come back from his Toad Sage training. He had finally gotten the message that Payne and Conan had attacked Konoha looking for him, but by the time he had arrived, the damage had been done. Several of Payne's slave bodies had been destroyed, but so had much of the village. Many civilians and ninja had been injured or killed, and the stress all the medical nins felt was overwhelming. Naruto wandered the village, helping with search and rescue efforts, offering aid and comfort where and when he could. He almost cried when he came across his favorite ramen stand and saw the owner's daughter, Ayame, sitting there holding her father's head in her lap. Tuchi looked as pale as death, but due to Naruto's enhanced senses, he was able to tell that the old man was alive. Gently, he lifted Tuchi from the ground and launched himself toward the hospital. Once there, he met up with Tsunade, Shizune and Sakura and begged them to help the man who had fed him for all those lost and lonely years. Naruto stayed around the hospital and helped when he could, using his massive reserves of chakra to help boost the healing abilities of the various medic and doctors, most notably Sakura. Her chakra reserves over the years had grown, but they were nowhere near what she needed for what she did. Sakura, like her knuckle-headed teammate, liked to push herself harder than she should. Over the next several days, Naruto had to stop her several times to rest and recover. Toward the end, the stress finally hit her hard, and she broke down. Naruto, seeing the lady that he loved crying her eyes out, did what came naturally. He walked over and held her close, letting her lean on him, physically and emotionally. When she was done, Naruto had a soaked jacket which he laughed about as Sakura blushed a deep scarlet. She began to apologize for her weakness when she looked up in his eyes and saw something that she had overlooked for years and years. Sakura had later told him that she saw nothing but pure, unadulterated love in his eyes that day. It wasn't long after that Sakura asked him out on a date. A year later, they were married, much to the surprise to all their friends. Naruto finished up taking care of his wife, then reached over and stroked her cheek. She smiled in her sleep and snuggled into his hand like she always did. Naruto smiled back, this was something he did every morning when he woke up, and she reacted the same way each and every day. Once more, he thanked God for his blessings as his wife began to stir from her slumber. Em, Sasuke, she muttered softly as she turned her head toward Naruto's hand. The toad sage chuckled softly at this, knowing full well that his best friend was the last person she had seen before falling asleep. No, my little blossom, it's your husband, he whispered into her ear as he bent down and placed a soft kiss on her lips. Sakura slowly opened her eyes and gazed into the bright blue orbs of her mate. How are you feeling, Naruto, she whispered hoarsely, her throat still sore from the screams and cries of childbirth. You made it, of course I did, he replied cheerfully as he grabbed a glass and filled it with ice water and a straw. He carefully placed the straw to her lips, allowing her to sip and ease the pain in her throat. I'm just sorry I wasn't there for the birth. I wasn't there for you, he added sadly. That, that's okay, she said softly as she tried to sit up some in her bed, causing her husband to reach over and help her up some, propping a few pillows back behind her to help support her. I didn't know I was going to go into labor today. I was the one that sent you out today, remember? I'm just glad you asked Sasuke to look in on me. Uhhh, she moaned. Naruto quickly reached over and took her free hand, doing his best to comfort her. You okay, hun? The blonde asked nervously, scared that something was wrong with his wife. This was, after all, their first child. The first of many, he hoped, if she didn't kill him for putting her through this first. Just a little sore, baby, she answered back, taking her other hand from Sasuke's and placing it gingerly on her now deflated stomach. Before he could dash outside and yell for Shizune, she grasped his hand tighter. I'll be okay, I promise. You're sure? He worried, but a quick nod from her reassured him. Naruto let out a big sigh of relief before noticing that his best friend and brother was beginning to stir from his own sleep. About time you woke, you worthless bum. Naruto? He asked as he stretched in the chair in which he sat. Opening his eyes, Sasuke turned and glared at the hyperactive sage that stood on the other side of the bed. Who are you calling a worthless bum, you stinking pile of cow turds? 
Naruto sniffed his armpits and clothing before walking around the bed to look the Uchiha square in the eye. What do you mean, stinking? I'll have you know, I took a shower just last month, like clockwork, he replied, doing his best to match Sasuke's harsh glance with one of his own. He failed, as a huge foxy grin split his face, one that was matched by his friend. Both Jonin clasped right hands and enveloped each other in a proper man hug. Thanks for being there for us, bro. For being here now, Naruto said gruffly, doing his damnedest not to cry. If I had lost her, lost them. I understand, man, I really do, the dark-haired Uchiha replied as he glanced past his best friend and looked at Sakura. She turned and looked away from the sight of male bonding. So, Naruto quickly broke the embrace and turned to his wife as he looked around the room somewhat, where is my son? I was kinda hoping that he would have been in here so that I could properly greet him. Sakura's eyes widened slightly before she spoke up. Shizun had him sent to the nursery right after he was born, the pink-haired Namikaze replied as Sasuke stepped out the door. Naruto looked a little worried about that. It's just routine, standard procedure. They were going to clean him up, weight him, and such. Naruto nodded his head in understanding. Several minutes passed before Sasuke and a nurse walked back into the room, the nurse carrying a small, moving bundle in her arms. Lord Namikaze, would you like to hold your son? She asked gently as she passed the squirming, wrapped bundle over to him. He frowned inwardly for the briefest of moments. Ever since he had come back from his sage training, more and more people began to use that title with him. It was no wonder that Jiraiya had disliked it when people used it with him, it felt so false. All dark thoughts passed from him though in the instant he held the small bundle of life in his arms. From the moment that Naruto had learned that Sakura was pregnant, he did something that everyone thought was silly at the time. He talked to the baby. He would always fall to his knees and give Sakura's belly a hug right after he had done the same with her. He would sit and talk to both of them for hours, as Sakura would giggle at the silliness of his actions. On days that he would forget to talk to his son before he left for work, the baby would give Sakura all sorts of fits until she would track him down or until someone would drag the blonde knucklehead home to talk to the baby. After Sakura was put on bed rest, he would come home in the evening and lay there speaking soothingly to his son, gently sending warm waves of chakra into his wife's belly to help ease her and the baby's discomfort. It worked every time. That's strange, the nurse stated as she watched the small baby become still as he laid in his father's arms. He's been the busiest and loudest baby I've seen in a long time. Nothing but fussy since we took him to the nursery. But just look at him now. You are going to be one hell of a father. Naruto blushed at her statement. Yeah, he's definitely a daddy's boy, the blonde whispered as he gazed down at the precious bundle in his arms. The baby in his arms reached out with one pudgy little arm and touched his face, his little eyes still closed but a small baby smile caressing his lips. Look, he's smiling. Ah, the nurse cooed as she looked down on the little bundle of energy in his father's arms, before a look from the Uchiha caused her to frown and leave the room. I'll come back by later to take him back to the nursery. You should get to know him. Thank you, nurse. Naruto beamed as he turned back to his wife, a smile brighter than any she had ever seen before adorning his face. Look Sakura, our son. Sakura smiled softly as she watched her husband walk toward her, their son in his arms. He sat down beside her in the chair previously occupied by Sasuke and began to study his son's features in the light provided by the lamp over Sakura's bed. Something wrong, baby? His wife asked cautiously as a strange look took over Naruto's face. Sasuke stood in the corner of the room furthest from the new family, his hands in his pockets. Naruto continued to look at his son as he began to reply to his wife. Not really. You know how a baby usually looks something like his parents? You know, like Asuma and Kurinai's little girl looked just like her mother, but had her father's eyes? The same with Aruka and Ayame's little boy. But you know, I really can't tell whose features he has. They seem so familiar, but I really can't place them, he said as he handed the baby to his wife, who had stuck out her hands to hold the little namikaze. Well you know, sometimes that just doesn't happen, Sakura said quickly as she took her baby in her arms, who promptly began to squirm and fuss as soon as he was out of his father's reach. Naruto began to say something in return when the blanket on the top of the baby's head fell away revealing a head full of jet black hair. Naruto's heart tightened in his chest, realizing that something was wrong. 
From what he knew of both his and Sakura's family, no one in at least the past five generations had black hair. A deep dread began to crawl into his gut as the little baby in Sakura's arms finally opened his eyes, revealing not sky blue nor green, but black. It all began to click into place, the color of the hair and eyes, the shape of the eyes, nose, mouth, and chin. They were all unmistakable. The baby in his wife's arms, the one he had grown to love more than life itself, the one he would talk to for hours each day, the one that became the center of his universe was not his. The baby's true father was Sasuke Uchiha. What? He gasped as he looked into the eyes of his loving wife, only to see that she refused to look back into his. Please tell me it isn't true, Sakura refused to answer him. Why? He turned back toward his brother and stormed over to him. His heart felt like someone had stabbed him in the heart with a dull kanai. Why would you two do this to me? Naruto, I wish I could tell you I'm sorry for what we've done, but I can't, Sasuke said as he continued to refuse to look the toad sage in the eye. Sakura and I, we love each other. Why? God damn it. Why? Naruto bellowed as he grabbed Sasuke by the front of his shirt. His heart had just shattered into a thousand pieces, and it was worse than any pain he had ever felt in his life. It was worse than when Sasuke had rammed a Chidori into his chest, trying to kill him. Right now, his best friend had just destroyed his whole universe. His voice dropped into a hoarse whisper as he pulled Sasuke's face close to his own. How long? Just how long have you been fucking my wife, Uchiha? God, Naruto, please stop this. Sakura begged as the baby in her arms began to cry. Naruto refused to turn back to his wife and continued to stare the Uchiha in the eye. Sasuke attempted to activate his Sharingan, but Naruto's power now far exceeded his own. Using just his sage abilities, Naruto shut down Sasuke's access to his blood limit. His normally blue eyes shifted to red with slits as his anger began to rise at the betrayal he felt. How long, Uchiha? He growled, his fangs growing longer by the second. Sasuke's eyes grew large, knowing full well that he was powerless before the rage of his former best friend. Just after I got out of jail, Sasuke whispered as he tore his eyes from Naruto's, staring now at the floor beneath his feet. She and I talked a lot when I was serving my time, and we both grew to love each other. I'm not sorry I love her, I'm just sorry at how badly we've hurt you. You lie. The Kyubi container snarled as his nails grew into claws. You must have used your Sharingan to place her under a Genjutsu. She would never betray me like that. The blonde Jonan pulled back his free hand and poised his claws to tear out the Uchiha's throat. Prepare to die, you son of a bitch. Naruto, stop. I love him. Please don't kill him. He's my baby's father. Sakura screamed, hoping and praying that he wouldn't kill her lover. Naruto's heart now shattered into a million pieces, rather than just a thousand. The woman that he loved more than life itself had just confessed her love for his former best friend, as well as her sin. Claws tore at his chest as he dropped Sasuke to the floor and turned to his wife, his shoulders slumped in defeat. Why, Sakura, why did you do this to me? He begged as he walked over to her, his features back to normal, but the sadness in his eyes and on his face was enough to break even the coldest heart. You were everything to me. I, I lived for you, you know that? What, what did I do wrong? What did I do that was so wrong that you would have to go running to him? She looked up at him, her tears matching the tears that were now streaming down his face. Nothing. You did nothing wrong, Naruto. This wasn't about you, it was about Sasuke and me, and the love I've had for him since we were kids. When we talked, it just got stronger and stronger, until we couldn't fight it anymore. I really didn't mean to hurt you, Naruto, his wife replied, her head now bowed, allowing her pink tresses to hide her face. The baby in her arms continued to cry. It wasn't about me? You're my wife, goddammit. This was damn sure about me at one point or another. Haven't I always treated you right? Haven't I always been there for you during all your ups and downs? What about the love I've held for you ever since we met? Did that count for nothing? He cried, his tears now flowing in a constant stream. What? Was I just a standby? A second choice until your precious Sasuke came back from whatever the hell he was doing? Just second best, ready to be disposed of whenever you got tired of me? Did the two of you have a good laugh at my expense, seeing poor stupid Naruto living a lie, thinking that his wife was faithful and really loved him? I did love you, Naruto, I do love you. 
but just not like I love Sasuke, not as strongly, not as deeply. You were always my best friend, Naruto, someone I could always depend on. Sakura explained, trying to calm her husband but still refusing to look him in the eye. But just not someone you could spend the rest of your life with. Not someone you could be faithful to. Not someone you could be a wife to. Tell me, did you ever really love me as your husband, or did you always pretend that I was him? Did you fantasize about him every time we made love? Was I ever in your heart? Sakura continued to refuse to look at him. I, I don't know, Naruto, Sakura mumbled softly, honestly not knowing how to answer his questions. I loved him first, but when he was gone, I learned to love you. You were in my heart, always. When I was with you, I never thought about Sasuke, much. You were never second best. But after you brought him back, the old feelings resurfaced. Yes, after you brought him back, I did, think of him. Every time we made love, I couldn't help it. Then he confessed his feelings for me, I don't know. I just couldn't help myself. That has got to be the biggest bullshit answer I've ever heard, the blonde muttered, his chest feeling like someone had torn it from his body. His head hurt, he was dizzy, and he felt weak. His wife had just confessed that she dreamed of the Uchiha when she was with him. That hurt worse than he thought it could, but it wasn't over yet. He turned back to his former friend. You, after all I did for you, you betray me like this. I saved you from Madara and pain. I saved you from Tsunade and the council. They wanted to kill you the minute you returned. I begged and pleaded with them to spare your life. I was the one who convinced them to only give you a few months in prison, rather than a life sentence. I spent years of my life to grow stronger to save you and keep my promise to my wife. What the fuck happened, man? You just couldn't stand the fact I had something you didn't? The great Sasuke Uchiha was so jealous of the dead last that he had to steal his wife? Sasuke still refused to meet his eyes. Sakura, Naruto continued as he gulped great breaths of air, enough that it worried her that he was going to hyperventilate. Tears still streamed from his eyes as his voice got hoarse and quiet. How long did you know? How long have you known you weren't carrying? My child? Naruto was really hoping that he could pull something from this mess, that maybe something could be salvaged from he and his wife's relationship. He looked at the both of them, as Sasuke had moved over to the other side of the bed and stood next to Sakura. Their eyes told him what he didn't want to know. Um, since the beginning, his wife whispered looking down at the fussing baby, who still refused to calm. Sasuke reached out and took the screaming child in his arms, which did nothing but cause it to scream louder. He quickly handed it back off to Sakura. Naruto's eyes widened as his heart dropped even further than it had previously. Okay, so you planned this all along, he said softly, as all the heartache and pain leaked into his voice. You knew you were pregnant with his child, and you knew how I'd react. I guess you just wanted to see the look on the idiot's face when he found out, huh? I hope you enjoyed it. Just tell me, how did you know? His wife sighed. I promise you, baby, that I never wanted to hurt you, she cried softly, but we knew it couldn't be helped. Being a medical nin, I knew the day that our baby. Our baby, Sasuke added, causing the namikazes to glare at him. The baby was conceived. I knew who the father was because, well, you know. Before I could say anything, Otto attacked. I told Sasuke afterwards about the baby, then I got with you and told you I was ready to start a family, she concluded, exhaustion beginning to take its toll on her. Her face grew pale, and she began to feel weak, but she continued to hold on to the baby securely. So, you purposely had me believe that another man's child was my own. You knew how much I was looking forward to being a father. You knew how happy your news made me. I never had a family, I guess I never will. Naruto's head hung low, his eyes hidden from view. He walked over to Sakura and the baby and reached over and gently rubbed the child's cheeks, causing the baby to immediately become quiet once more. A sad smile crossed his face as he looked down on the smiling newborn. Little one, in the nine months that you were in your mama, you made me that happiest I had ever been in my entire life. I loved, loved you so much that I would have done anything for you, even giving you the stars and the moon. But now, well, I want you to be happy with your parents, and be a good little boy. I won't be bothering any of you anymore. Naruto? His wife asked, a strange pleading look in her eyes. Naruto tried to be civil, but it just wasn't in his heart. What, do you really expect me to raise another man's child? Do you really think that I'm stupid enough to think that this was a one-time thing, and that you'll now be loyal to me now that you were caught? 
Do you really think that you would be able to keep your husband and your lover too? That I would share you? Sorry, Sakura, but it doesn't work that way. I'm going to take myself out of your life so that you, Sasuke, and the baby can be a family. You won't have to worry about Naruto Namikaze anymore. With that, he gave his wife, his former friend, and their child one last sad look, and then walked out the door. Sasuke and Sakura were next to each other in stunned silence, but the baby had no problem making any sort of noise whatsoever. The moment that Naruto left the room, the little one screamed louder than it ever had before. Sakura worked and worked to calm him, but nothing worked. Oh my god, Sasuke, what are we going to do? She asked her lover, who looked as lost and clueless as she felt. What about Naruto? I don't know, hun, I really don't know. Naruto slowly walked out of the hospital and down the street, his head down and his hands in his pockets. He wasn't paying attention to where his feet were taking, mainly due to the war that was raging within his mind. He was blind and deaf to everything around him. That bitch. That lying slut. That fucking whore. Let me out. I want to rage. Kill. 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 The Kayubi screamed down in the depths of Naruto's mind. The blonde was curled up in a ball and laying on his side in the water that ran through the sewer of his mind. He merely allowed the waves of hate and anger wash over him, his eyes staring blankly ahead, his back to the cage. Kayubi, he whispered, but wasn't heard by the nine-tailed fox, who continued to slam into his cage head first, the vibrations shaking the ground greater than any earthquake. That traitorous Uchiha, he's a bad as the rest of his cursed clan. He betrayed you. He betrayed us. Our mate betrayed us. Kill 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 kill. We should have killed him when we could. We should have torn his innards from his body. The demon continued to roar, his eyes red with bloodlust. He was feeling something that was alien to him, which was nothing new especially since he had been imprisoned within the hyperactive blonde. He was feeling hurt. He had felt many, many things in his long life. Hate, rage, glee, bloodlust. The sheer pleasure of crushing those weaker than himself. The utter satisfaction of wreaking total destruction. However, since his life force was now being merged with his containers, the pathway between the two became a two-way street. Whereas Naruto had gained the fox's ferocity, rage, and strength, the Kayubi had gained access to things he had never known before. He learned of compassion, happiness, and most importantly, love. These were strange feelings, but over time, he came to welcome them. He could feel Naruto's joy when Sakura agreed to become his wife. He felt Naruto's happiness and contentment whenever he and Sakura held each other. He felt the pain of separation whenever they were parted, and the utter thrill of their reunions. He felt the pride whenever Naruto discovered that he was going to be a father. He showed Naruto how to channel his chakra into a warm and loving blanket that could be used to bond with and comfort the child within his mate's womb. Sakura had become his mate as well. The kid was his as well, even if he refused to admit it. Unfortunately, all this had a downside. He felt the pain, the hurt, the heartache of Sakura's betrayal. The Kayubi had a broken heart. Who would have thought? This led to his current state. He felt pain, pain greater than any he ever had experienced. It was killing him, tearing him asunder. Let me out. I cannot stand this. Release me. We need to raise this village to the ground. We'll tear the very earth to its core. This world will know our pain. Release me, Kit. We will make them pay, make them all pay. No, Kayubi, Naruto whispered, it's not their fault. I'm to blame. Leave the world be. The Kayubi stopped his thrashing and stared at his container in confusion and shock. What? Just what the hell do you mean, you idiot? How are we to blame? It was that rat bastard and his slut that were thinking with their crotches that are to blame, not us. The fox shot back, expecting the curled up blonde to respond in some way, but was disappointed when nothing happened. Kit, you're not giving up, are you? You never give up. Go back and force that bitch to love us again. I can't. It's over. You can't force love, fox. I learned that a long time ago. Or at least I thought I did. Naruto whispered as the water in the sewer began to grow deeper and deeper, threatening to drown him. Oh shit, Kit, get up, you gotta get up and out of here. If you die in here, your mind will be gone, and then we're of no use to anyone. We'll just be an empty shell, taking up space and good for nothing. Kayubi admonished, reaching through the cage as far as he could, nudging the unresponsive blonde with one claw. Too late, I'm already good for nothing. Sakura's mother was right. I'm nothing. 
I'll never be anything. I'm not even a father, anymore. He muttered as the water rose higher and higher. Damn it. What about your dream, kid? What about being Hokage, just like your father? What about protecting everyone who is precious to you? What about that, huh? Kayubi asked, doing his best to rouse his jailer from his current state. I was willing to give up on my dream just to be a husband and father. Just to have a family. Now, I'm neither. Let me go, Fox, he sobbed meekly, as the water began to creep over his mouth and nose. Hey, Naruto, a familiar voice called out, automatically drawing him from his mindscape. Huh? He asked as he looked up and saw who was calling to him. Ino was standing in front of Ichiraku's ramen stand while her two teammates sat on stools behind her, happily eating their noodles. She was waving frantically at him. How's it going? She hollered out, causing Shikamaru to cringe. Oh god, not her, not now, he mentally begged, but to no avail. He plastered his silly grin on his face and waved back at her, greeting her warmly. Or at least he thought he did. Instead, he turned to her, his face fallen, his tears still pouring down his face, his eyes no longer their normal bright blue. They were dull and lifeless. He struggled to pull one hand from his pocket and raise it. Hi, he whispered so softly that Ino almost missed it. Her eyes grew large as she saw the absolute devastation and despair that was etched upon his normally happy and annoying face. His chin quivered as he struggled in vain to contain his emotions. Dropping his hand, he slowly turned back toward the path and began to shuffle back down it once more. He disappeared before Ino's startled eyes in a gust of wind. What, what the hell was wrong with him? I've never seen him that down in the dumps before, even when. Jiraiya, died? Oh my god. Ino yelped as she turned back to her friends, her hands covering her mouth. She turned deathly pale and began to tremble uncontrollably. Choji and Shikamaru turned back around to her as soon as they heard her outburst. Ino, what's wrong? Choji asked, his eyes filled with concern for his blonde teammate. She continued to tremble until he and Shikamaru stood up and placed their hands on her shoulders. Naruto, he looked so sad. He looked worse than he did when his sensei died. Something must have happened to either Sakura or the baby. Come on, we gotta get to the hospital. She screamed as she shook off their hands and leapt full speed toward the hospital, her teammates right on her heels. Naruto slowly opened the door to the house he and his wife had, until very recently, so happily shared. It hurt his chest to walk through the doors and to see all the memories that they had made in the past five years. It's all fake. It's a joke. It's all false. He muttered sadly as he walked to their bedroom, but was sidetracked when he noticed the door to the nursery was slightly ajar. His breath caught in his throat as he gently reached out and pushed it open all the way. He looked in, as a sad smile formed on his face. In the corner stood the baby bed that he and Sakura had taken such care in picking out. Next to it was the changing table and the dresser that they gotten to match the bed. The walls were painted a light blue and had pictures of small forest animals painted in various places around the room. Naruto chuckled when he remembered hiring Konohamaru and his genin team to paint the room, as a D-rank mission. He never would have thought that his little brother would have had such an eye for detail. Over in another corner stood the little wooden toy box that Yamato had made for them. It was overflowing with small stuffed animals that their friends and family had given them for the baby. It hit hard just then. This was originally his parents' house, and it had been given to him as a gift from Tsunade when he and Sakura got married. The room before him was the same room his parents had prepared when his mother was pregnant with him. Neither they nor he had been able to use it, and now the irony of it struck him like a bolt from the blue. This room would never be used. It was cursed. Every time it was made ready for a baby, something happened. The same curse struck him that had struck his parents. He broke, roaring with rage. All the beasts of Konoha and its forest answered in kind, as their howls joined his. The citizens were unnerved as the cacophony from nature raised the hair on the back of their necks, and caused the weaker of the to fall to their knees. In the Inazuka compound, the dog handlers were at a loss as to what was causing the commotion. Naruto slid to the floor, his energy spent as great sobs racked his body, tears flowing greater now than they had previously. He had failed, he had let his parents down. He had let his friends down. He had let his village down. Worst of all, he had let himself down. Please, Kit, stop, Kayubi begged. T 
tears appearing in his eyes for the first time in his existence. Please, it hurts. I can't stand it. Make it stop, please. However, his host was unable to answer, for he was too lost in his own misery to be able to stop the misery of anyone else. After an untold number of hours, exhaustion finally claimed Naruto as he passed out in a crumpled heap in an unoccupied corner of the Chamber of Pain. When he finally awoke, the blonde Kayubi container rubbed his red and puffy eyes before staring out the window, only to discover that darkness had fallen over the worst day of his entire life. Slowly, he pulled himself up from the cold floor and stumbled over to the transparent portal to the harsh world beyond. The smiling crescent moon seemed to watch him and smirk at him and his pathetic condition. HN, even the fucking moon seems to enjoy my misery, Naruto mumbled as he turned toward the door that led to the rest of his house and left the silent nursery behind. He walked into his bedroom and opened up the closet, carefully ignoring all of Sakura's clothing as he reached up and pulled a huge stack of blank scrolls down from the shelf within. He shuffled slowly to the kitchen and dumped the scrolls on the table before creating 30 shadow clones. Okay, Naruto began hoarsely, his throat still raw with emotion. I want you 20 there to start packing all of Sakura's and the baby's stuff and place them in these ceiling scrolls. The other 10 will pack my stuff and do the same. Make sure that you do not get them mixed up and mark them plainly. The clones looked at him sadly before turning to their tasks. Naruto walked over to his desk and pulled yet another scroll, along with a pen and his personal seal. He felt something stir within him, but he tried his best to ignore it. Kit, what are you planning? The fox asked. The two-way channel between he and his jailer had been blocked, causing him to worry about his blonde container. I'm setting them free, Kayubi. I'm making them happy, Naruto replied as he continued to scribble on the scroll, using nearly all of his self-control to accomplish the task. What, aren't you going to fight for them? Are you just giving them up? Kayubi asked in a state of shock. He didn't want Naruto to give up. He didn't want to hurt like he had been and wanted to do nothing more than go and claim their family back from the Uchiha. No, I'm not going to fight for them, replied the Hokage to be, even if I won, they wouldn't be happy with me. I can see that now. I only want them to be happy, and obviously I'm not the one they want. With that, he finished the scroll and sealed it before creating another clone and sending it to Lady Tsunade with said scroll. I hate you, the Kitsune said half-heartedly as he crawled into the furthest corner of his cell, laying his head on his paws and beginning to whimper. I know, I'm used to it, Naruto replied sadly as he watched his clones slowly empty his house of the memories that he had accumulated over the past five years. Ino was very troubled as she and her teammates walked back from their visit to Konoha General. As quickly as they could, they had ran to the hospital to see if Sakura and the baby were alright, only to discover that both were physically fine. Ino looked over and saw the baby in his mother's arms and just had to rush over and check him out. He was the cutest thing Ino had ever seen, and even Choji was quickly wrapped around the little baby's finger. When Ino turned toward Shikamaru with the baby in her arms, she quickly noticed the disgruntled look on his face. What's wrong, Shika? He won't bite, you know, she beamed as she walked over to the Nara air and held the baby for him to see. Her teammate quickly glanced at the baby and just as quickly glanced at Sasuke, who was standing by the bed next to Sakura. You bastard, Shikamaru seethed quietly through his teeth as he continued to stare at the head of the Uchiha clan. Sasuke quickly looked away from the Nara, becoming most interested by the pattern of the floor tiles. Ino was shocked beyond belief. Shikamaru. Ino barked as quietly as she could, holding the baby closer to her chest. How dare you say something like that about the baby? Flames shot from her eyes as Shikamaru looked back down at the sleeping bundle in her arms, his eyes and face softening slightly. Not him, Ino, Shikamaru replied as he looked up into her cornflower blue eyes and pointed to the Uchiha behind her, him. Ino rapidly spun and looked over at the dark-haired man. Sasuke, what about him? Ino asked, puzzled. Choji got what Shikamaru was saying and quickly stepped over to the side of the room, not wanting to be in the line of fire. Troublesome. Ino, not even you can be that blind, the Nara stated as he crossed his arms once more. Take a close look at the baby again and tell me who he looks like, Sakura or Naruto. Uh, well, she answered as she looked closer at the baby's features. Her brows furrowed as she did everything she could to figure out the answer to Shikamaru's riddle. Giving up, she merely shook her head. 
I give up, I can't tell. Who does he look like? Ino, Choji said softly from the side, why did we come here in the first place? Well, duh, to see if Sakura and the baby were okay. The blonde answered as she looked back at her pink-haired friend that still looked awful pale from her ordeal. Sakura's eyes seemed dull and lifeless, refusing to meet hers. And why did we come here to check up on them? Shikamaru asked, his eyes still locked onto the Uchiha. He was fighting the urge to pull out a cigarette and light up. What a fucking drag, he thought. Because how upset Naruto was when we saw him earlier, the Yamanaka girl answered, getting frustrated at the questions and the situation. She unconsciously blew at the blonde bang that fell in front of the right eye. So if the two of them are okay, then why was Naruto so upset? Choji asked softly as his eyes turned back to the couple that didn't seem to want them to connect the dots. I don't know, that's what we're here to find out, right? And what does this have to do with who the baby looks like? Ino, what color is his hair? Shikamaru asked, his teeth gritting with anger at the Uchiha. He wanted to punch him out so badly that it hurt, then he wanted to go and check on Kuranai and her daughter. Whose hair? Ino asked innocently, still not putting the pieces of the puzzle together. The babies. Shikamaru barked back, rather exasperated at his blonde teammate. Huh? It's black, why? She asked, then a puzzled look crossed her face. Wait a sec. Naruto is a blonde and Sakura has pink hair. So why does the baby have black hair? Oh shit. She exclaimed, which promptly awaked the tiny bundle in her arms. Black eyes shot open as an ear-piercing wail of a magnitude unknown to any of them ever before assaulted their ears. Damn it, Ino. We just got him quiet and asleep before you came in. Sakura said tiredly as the blonde quickly handed the thrashing bundle over to his mother. The pink-haired medic began to rock and coo at the baby, doing everything she could think of to comfort the little one in her arms. Shikamaru and Choji made a beeline for the door, only to be grabbed by their collars by a furious blonde and dragged back into the room. Oh hell no, we're not going anywhere until we get some answers. Ino growled in a voice that caused her friends to cower in fear in the furthest corner of the room. After about half an hour, the baby finally calmed back down and went back to sleep much to the relief of everyone else on the floor. All right you too, Ino said to Sasuke and Sakura, who knew they were trapped without any possibility for escape, what the hell happened? Uh, well, it's kinda like this. Sakura began to tell her tale, which after many interruptions and side discussions, lasted several hours. Ino, Choji, and Shikamaru, utterly disgusted by their friend's actions, finally left the small family alone for the night and went to their favorite barbecue restaurant and mulled over everything that they had learned. Ino, are you okay? Choji asked as they walked from the restaurant toward their respective homes. Ino, not realizing that she had zoned out on them, was startled at the question. Huh? Oh, yeah, Choji, I'm okay. I'm just still trying to sort out everything that we heard today, she replied, focusing on her large friend. A look of sadness crossed his face. Yeah, it's a real kick in the nads, he responded. He was having trouble believing what had happened. You know, I always thought Naruto and Sakura were the perfect couple. They always seemed so happy and so into each other, you know? Yeah, Shikamaru added as he took a drag from his cigarette and exhaled sharply from his nose, it just goes to show you. Life has a way of fucking you over when you least suspect it. I wonder if what we saw from the Namikazes was just an act. Did they really hate each other and fight like crazy when nobody was around? Did they really hate each other? Ino violently shook her head, her blonde ponytail whipping around in a frenzy. No, Naruto was happy. I always saw him smile, a really one. Not that fake one he always plastered on his face when we were kids. She vehemently defended. Sakura loved him too. It all went to hell when Sasuke came back. Flames once more shot from her eyes. Sasuke is not the only to blame, Ino, Shikamaru responded, shaking his head sadly. Ino turned to glare at him. Sakura must bear some of the responsibility as well. Yeah, it takes two to tango, Choji added sadly. I feel so sorry for Naruto. I just can't imagine what he's going through, losing his wife and his son to his best friend. If I ever lost a Aoi like that. He shuddered at the thought of his girlfriend leaving him. They met when she was hired as a waitress at his family's restaurant and had been dating for a year now. The two of them were just now beginning to talk about marriage and settling down. 
Yeah, same here with Tamari, Shikamaru agreed, feeling a pain in his chest at the thought of Tamari leaving him. It was something he didn't want to think about. Ino looked at him from the corner of her eyes, marveling at the rare display of emotion that was so evident in his voice. That must be why I reacted so badly back there. Now maybe you'll see how Tamari feels when you spend so much time with Kurunai and her kid, she said gently as she placed her hand on his arm. Shikamaru nodded his head softly, his eyes downcast. Well, guys, I'll see you two tomorrow, Shoji said as they came to an intersection in the road and turned off to head back home. A sad smile crossed his face as he waved goodbye to them, the smiling crescent moon watching them over his shoulder. All right, night Shoji. Ino waved back to her friend before she and Shikamaru turned back to their journey. They walked for another five minutes or so before they noticed a familiar figure walking slowly toward them, a scroll in his hand. Naruto? Ino asked incredulously, causing her fellow blonde to stop and turn to them. The look in his eyes shattered Ino's heart. All life was gone from them. Huh? Oh, hey guys. Nah, I'm just a clone. The shadow clone replied as he regarded his friends. Boss is still at home, getting things together. Why did he send you out? Shikamaru asked, his curiosity getting the better of him. Ino was wondering about that as well. Uh, he's sending me to the Hokage with this. The clone answered as he held the scroll up. The Nara recognized the official Namikaze seal set on the scroll, causing him to scowl somewhat. Is that what I think it is? Shikamaru queried, causing the clone to nod in agreement. Troublesome. Very troublesome, not that I can blame him though. Ino looked on, rather confused. What is it, Shika? Her friend shook his head sadly. It's not for me to say, Ino, it's not for me to say, he said sadly, causing his blonde teammate to worry. Well, I gotta go, Shadow Naruto said as he began to walk away from them, before turning back. Hey, Ino, can I ask a favor? I know it's kinda out of your way, but can you go and check up on the boss? I'm worried about him. Uh, yeah, sure, Ino replied, thinking it was strange for a clone to express concern for its creator, it's not too far from my house, and it's on Sheikah's way anyway. We'll check up on him. Great, thanks a lot, he said as he began his journey once more. Ino and Shikamaru looked back at him before resuming their own. Naruto looked around at his now empty house. His clones had followed his orders to the letter, everything was packed up into the ceiling scrolls. Every dish, every bit of furniture, every picture, every stitch of clothing, every weapon, every single thing was sealed. The house was now empty and barren, save for he and his remaining clones. It was like the very soul had been sucked from the house. Alright, now I want half of you to take Sakura's and the baby's scrolls over to the Uchiha's compound and leave them on his doorstep. He directed his clones, who slowly picked up the scrolls and walked out the door, taking one last look at the house and their shattered creator. In the blink of an eye, they disappeared into the cold night. Naruto drew in a wavering breather before turning back to the rest of his crew. Okay, I want the rest of you to take my stuff over to the Hokage's place and have her put them into the family vaults, he said his strength slowly but surely giving out. The volume of his voice was sinking, causing some of his clones to look at him with concern. Um, boss? How can you live in a house with all your stuff locked up? There's not even a bed or bedroll in here for you to sleep on. Why don't you keep the scroll out with your camping stuff and at least sleep comfortably tonight? One of the shadow Naruto's asked as he looked at his creator, who looked dead to the world. Naruto merely smiled at the concern his clones were showing for him. That's okay, guys. For one, I'll never sleep in that bed again. Don't worry about me. I'll sleep comfortably tonight. The floor's not that hard he replied, trying to force a smile on his face and a chuckle in his voice. It didn't work. With a wave of his hand, he sent his clones out on their mission. Kit, what's going on? The Kayubi asked, getting really worried about the mental state of his host. Naruto had managed to shut down the two-way communications between the two of them, so he had no idea what Naruto was doing, nor what was going on in his mind. Kayubi was once more locked totally within his seal. You're beginning to scare me, Kit. It's nothing, Kayubi. There's nothing to worry about, Naruto replied, his voice thick with melancholy as he began to wander from room to room within his house. He would stop and stare at the room for several minutes before moving on to the next one. His memories flashing to the times he spent with those precious to him. 
The times he and Shikamaru would spend playing chess in the living room while Sakura and Choji would retreat to the kitchen to make up a huge mess of snacks. The time Kiba and he had tried to wash Akamaru in the bathroom and had ended up chasing a huge, wet, and soapy dog through the rest of the house before said mutt leapt up and landed on Hinata, covering the young Hyuga in a huge amount of suds. He and Kiba tried to hold back on their laughter but was unable to control themselves, causing his wife to come out and punch the two of them into tomorrow. The time that he had discovered a huge beehive in the backyard and had to get Shino to come over and remove them for him, before one bee got free and chased a screaming Naruto through and out of the house. It took a long time to live that one down. He could face hordes of missing nins, but one single bee had brought him to his knees. Naruto wandered into the dining room, where he remembered some of the rather interesting dinners that they had in there. Like the time Aruka and Ayame were over and Aruka finally went down on one knee and proposed to the ramen maker's daughter. They held the wedding in the backyard, where he had the pleasure of watching Tsunade, Shizune, Anko, and Kurinai get shit-faced drunk and begin a game of strip poker. Kiba and most of the other male guests were rooting for Tsunade to win but unfortunately the Hokage's luck held out and she was thankfully stopped from having to remove her kimono by an irate Sakura. The dining room was also the same place he and Sakura had finally convinced a starving Ino that dieting like she had been doing was killing her. He had finally forced her to sit down at the table and eat a huge bowl of ramen one day when she had come over and passed out from her obsessive behavior. She screamed and clawed and fought but he had finally forced her to eat the whole bowl and then convince her that she was a very beautiful woman. He was able to drag the reason why she had such a poor self-image and reminded her that no matter what one self-important guy may have said, she was not fat. It took a while, and a lot of talking and training, but they finally got her to a good weight. She was much healthier now than she ever had been before. Too many memories, too many fucking memories, Naruto muttered as he shuffled further back into the house and looked back into his bedroom his memories assaulting him again. It was where he and Sakura had consummated their love for the first time. It was where the two of them would stay up into the wee hours of the morning, making plans for the future, talking about what they wanted to accomplish in their careers. It was where they discussed having children. It was where the baby was conceived, just not by him. Naruto's eyes stung with tears as he grimaced and spun on his heel, tearing the door from its hinges as he stormed from the room and retreated into the nursery. Tears were now blinding him as he stumbled over to the furthest corner of the room and collapsed against the wall, sliding down to the floor. Naruto turned to his left and saw a picture of a cute little fox that had been painted there, the little kitsune sitting there and smiling at him. Mocking him, fuck you, Naruto snarled as he turned his head from the little chibi fox and tore his headband from his head and hurled it across the room, effectively burying it in the opposite wall. His strength gone, his heart broken his spirit destroyed, he loosed a great terrible sigh. Closing his eyes, his head fell forward as he felt the slight sting travel up his arm, causing a flare of warmth to flash across his being before darkness and cold began to overtake his consciousness. Kit, what the hell? Kayubi screamed, rattling his cage and tearing desperately at the seal. I'm tired, Kayubi. Good night, Ino, you sure you want to do this alone? Shikamaru asked her as the two of them stopped in front of Naruto's house. She stood there and crossed her arms and glared at her friend. Yes, I'm sure. We're talking Naruto here, I don't think I'm going to be in any danger. He's a friend and I owe him big time, so I think I can try to help him in his time of need, she replied, blowing the bang out of her eye once more. Shikamaru looked at the doubt clearly evident in his eyes. Besides, you really need to go see Tamari tonight and I've held you up too long to begin with. Now go, shoo, all right, all right, I'm going, but if you need anything, just holler and let me know, the shadow master said as he turned and walked off, waving to her as she walked up to the door and knocked. No answer. Hey, Naruto, open up, Ino yelled as she continued to pound on the door, but still, her fellow blonde wouldn't answer. Growling in frustration, she reached up over the doorframe and tapped a certain spot, causing a small panel next to the front door to open. Retrieving the key within, she let herself in, only to stop and gasp in shock at what she saw. What the hell? Ino saw a totally empty house, utterly and completely devoid of any signs of human habitation. This really threw her for a loop, 
remembering how the house had been decorated to make it feel warm and happy for everyone who had ever had the good fortune of entering the dwelling. Now it was bare, and it felt wrong. Naruto, where the hell are you? She hollered as she slowly searched through the house, remembering all the good times she and everyone had experienced there. Her life had been saved there. She was getting worried now for her dear friend, the crazy fool who had risked his life and his manhood to force ramen down her throat. The same idiot who held her whenever she broke up with whatever jerk she had been dating and allowed her to cry on his shoulder with nary an unkind word said. The same dumb ass who spent years of his life to bring back an ungrateful bastard. Eno checked every room in the house until she came to his bedroom. The sight of the shattered door was not a good sign in her eyes. Slowly, carefully she stepped over the sharp bits of wood that littered the floor and gazed once more into an empty room. This makes no sense, she thought to herself as she turned and left, heading to the one room she had yet to explore. It was right across the hall and strangely, it was the only room that was shut. It was the nursery. Naruto. She barked as she burst through the door. What the hell happened to, your, house? The words died as her senses tried to make sense of the scene before her. She thought, for the briefest of seconds, that she was hallucinating until the smell hit her. It was thick, and it was powerful. Oh, my, God, Naruto. Come in. Tsunade barked as she lifted her head from her desk, her head pounding slightly from the ungodly amount of sake she had consumed earlier in the day. The loud knocking on the door hadn't helped the situation. She looked up as the door opened and watched her hand-picked successor walk into her office. Hey, Naruto, how's the family? Lady Tsunade, Shadow Naruto said as he walked up to her desk and stood before her stiffly. The Hokage was a little startled that the annoying blonde was actually acting respectful for once. He never called her, Lady, it was always, Granny, or, Grandma. I need to give this to you. What's wrong Naruto? I thought you would be with Sakura and your baby right now. What could be so important that it couldn't wait until morning? The elder blonde asked as she reached out and took the scroll from his hands. Shadow Naruto refused to answer her, but continued to look down at the floor, flinching rather significantly when his family was mentioned. Uh, the scroll will explain everything, Lady Hokage. The clone responded dejectedly, never raising his eyes to meet hers. Tsunade's brows furrowed at the behavior of her young friend, someone that she had actually come to think of as an surrogate son. Still not sure what was going on, Tsunade opened the scroll and began to read its contents, only to drop it in shock, her mouth hanging wide open. You can't be serious, she barked as she glared at the other blonde in the room, who still refused to look up at her. Slamming her fist hard on her desktop, she stood up from behind her desk and reached over and grabbed the younger ninja by the collar. How the hell can you do this to her? Especially now of all times? Just what the hell are you thinking? Lady Hokage, if you'll read the rest of the scroll, you'll see the reasons why, the clone said as he tried to fight the tears that wanted to escape and flow down his bewhiskered cheeks. Reaching into his pocket, he pulled out a small box and set it on her desk before her. I was told to give this to you as well. You were told to? You're not the real Naruto, are you? Tsunade growled as she released her hold on the clone and grabbed the box, only to gasp as she pulled her grandfather's necklace free from its enclosure. She was shocked and puzzled beyond belief. Naruto would never give this up without a good reason. No ma'am, I'm not. I'm a shadow clone sent to deliver this, oh shit. The clone exclaimed before disappearing in a puff of smoke. Tsunade fell back into her chair, startled at the sudden vanishing of the clone, as well as the contents of the scroll in the box. Her hands shaking, she picked the scroll back up and finished reading it before her face turned white. Shizun. She screamed at the top of her lungs as she bolted back up out of her chair punching the top of her desk again and shattering it this time. A split second later, her first apprentice burst through the door, her kimono disheveled as she hadn't had time to properly don it before responding to her master's call. Lady Tsunade, what's wrong? The dark-haired woman asked as Tsunade raced from around the remnants of her abused desk and thrust the scroll into Shizun's face. What's this? You tell me, the Hokage said through gritted teeth as she crossed her arms and waited for her assistant to finishing reading the document. She watched Shizun's eyes widen as realization stuck. A divorce petition, brought by Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze against Sakura Uzumaki Namikaze ne Haruno on charges of infidelity and mental cruelty, listing Sasuke Uchiha as co-defendant on the charge of alienation of affection. 
I'm not surprised. Shizun sighed as she looked up from the document and looked into her master's widened eyes. You knew? Tsunade seed that she allowed her anger at the situation build up within her. Shizun blanched as she raised her hands up, waving them in defense. No, not exactly, anyway, Shizun explained as she collapsed into a nearby chair, dreading having to tell her friend face to face what she had suspected. As you know, Sakura had her baby today. Well, I was the one who delivered it for her, and I noticed several things. First off, Sasuke seemed a little more worried and upset than he should have been had he just been a friend helping out. Second, the baby was born with a head full of black hair. Lastly, the baby's facial features matched the Uchiha's, each and every one of them. I wrote it all up in a report and placed it on your desk today before you went to lunch. Tsunade blushed in embarrassment at this for she had dumped everything that was on her desk today into the largest drawer she had and locked it up before she began her drinking binge. Ah crap, Tsunade cursed as she pulled the file folder out of the ruble of her desk. Opening it up, she saw that there was indeed a highly detailed report on the birth of baby Namikaze. Shit, this isn't good. Not good at all. Look what Naruto sent back to me. Shizun began to tremble when she recognized the necklace. What does it mean, Tsunade? The apprentice asked, trembling in apprehension. Tsunade shook her head and sighed. I have no idea, Shizun. Come on, we need to go talk to Sakura and let her know what's going on. Then we need to go and find that knucklehead, Tsunade replied as she walked out the door, heading for the hospital. Let's just hope that idiot doesn't do anything stupid. Poor Naruto, Shizun whispered as she followed her master. The scene before Ino was like something right out of Dracula's wet dreams. The air was thick with the scent of blood, and it was no wonder. The crimson liquid was thick and sticky across the floor, forming a pool that easily engulfed half of the floor. Arterial spray covered the walls and ceilings, turning the light blue nursery into a tide-dyed room of horror. Ino stood there in shock as the realization of what had happened struck her like a freight train. However, it was what was in the middle of the scarlet pool that caused the young Yamanaka to gasp in horror. Oh, my. God, Naruto. She screamed as she dashed into the room just in time to see him plunge a kanai straight into his own chest. From the looks of things, it wasn't the first or even the fifth time he had done so. So intent she was on rushing to his side, she forgot to remember that blood was a liquid, so the moment that she stepped onto that ever-growing lake of red she slipped and fell on her backside, sliding clear across the room and slamming into the wall right next to her morbid friend. What the hell are you doing? Ino yelled as she sat up the best she could and began to check Naruto over, trying to see the extent of the damage. She was covered in a thick layer of blood, matting her hair to her head and face. Reaching up, she flicked her wet hair from her face and began a diagnostic jutsu as she reached down and forced open one of his eyes. They were cold and lifeless, but Ino knew he was still alive due to the torrents of crimson humor that poured from his wounds. She counted at least 10 separate stab wounds to his torso, as well as 3 huge cuts on his left arm that ran from his wrist to the crook of his elbow. They seemed to have been partially healed, but blood still oozed from the gaping chasms that he had opened. Ino, Naruto croaked as he finally acknowledged her presence. He stared at his fellow blonde through dull eyes. You look like shit? Ino smirked and snorted at his attempt at humor. Well, yeah, you don't look too hot either. She replied as she worked on healing the worst of his wounds, only to have him try to push her back rather ineffectively with his mutilated arm. Naruto, stop it, I gotta get you stabilized so we can get you to the hospital. Listen to her kit, the Kayubi yelled as he ran around his cage, pouring his chakra left and right, doing his best to heal the wounds his container had inflicted upon himself, as well as trying to replenish his blood supply. Naruto had already lost three times as much blood as a human held in their body, but thanks to the Kayubi, he was still producing more and more, not dying as he had hoped to do. Come on kid, we gotta live to show all the motherfuckers that they can't get to you. We're too strong to fall for their bullshit. You're wrong, Fox. Naruto whispered as he gathered what little strength he had left into his right arm. He tensed up as Ino leaned over him and tried to heal the stab wound that was closest to his heart. Hey, I know I'm gorgeous, but this isn't the time to hit on me, silly, Ino teased as she moved her crimson-stained hands over the gushing wound, pouring healing chakra in as fast as she could. Besides, you're a married, Naruto. 
Ino screamed as the friend under her care plunged the kanai straight into the seal on his stomach. Inside Naruto's mind, the Kayubi screamed as a metaphysical blade plunged into his cage from above and pierced his side, sending him into fits of agony and throwing him to the floor of his cell. Tears poured from his eyes as he struggled to stand once more, chakra still pouring from him to his container's wounds, just not as much as before. Damn you, idiot! The kitsune growled before falling to his belly, chakra still pouring from him to heal Naruto. Naruto, what are you doing, ah? Ino yelped as she pulled the kanai from his belly, only to have it slice across her own stomach. It wasn't deep, just a flesh wound, but it caused her bleed like a stuck pig and broke her concentration. She struck his arm and sent the kanai flying across the room, sticking it in the wall furthest from them. God, Naruto, do you really want to die that badly? The dying ninja looked up when he heard his friend cry out, and saw the slash mark across Ino's perfectly toned stomach. He heart fell once more as tears began to pour from his eyes once more. He had hurt his friend and hadn't meant to. I'm sorry, Ino, I D didn't mean to. She looked down at the belly and snorted, looking back to him. What, this? Hell, I cut myself worse shaving all the time, she joked, trying to lift his spirits as much as she could. Eno saw a small smile form on his lips. You must have some really hairy assed legs then. Remind me to get you a weed whacker for, next, Christmas, he replied before his eyes rolled back in his head. His head fell back and hit the floor as his body seemed to totally collapse, his energy totally spent. Eno panicked. Hey, wake up, asshole. I still have to beat the crap out of you for that remark, she yelled as she tried to focus her chakra into her hands to start healing him once more, only to discover that her reserves were down so low she couldn't do it. Grimacing, Ino knew she had to get him out of the house and to the hospital if she had any hope at all in saving him. Carefully getting to her feet, she picked him up under his arms and began to drag him from the room as carefully as she could, only to slip and fall several times in the pool of blood surrounding them. The fall managed to jar Naruto awake for the briefest of moments. It hurts, he whispered softly as Ino dragged him slowly through his house toward the front door. I know, baby, I know, she replied, fearing that she had hurt him even worse when they had fallen in the room. We'll get to Tsunade and get you fixed up as soon as possible. No, my heart, it hurts, make it stop, please, he begged before passing out once more. Tears began to flow down Ino's eyes as she did everything she could to save her friend. If I could, I would, she replied as she finally reached the front door and pulled him from his house and out into the front yard into the street before finally collapsing, her strength spent. She fell backward and pulled Naruto into her lap, holding onto her friend for dear life. Looking around, she saw the street was deserted. Shikamaru, she yelled, hoping that her teammate hadn't gotten too far away. Shikamaru. Anbu, Neji, god damn it, somebody, please help, within moments, help arrived, holy shit, Ino, what happened, Shikamaru yelped as he saw the two of them covered head to toe in blood, tears continued to flow as she looked her teammate square in the eye, Naruto tried to kill himself, she cried as she continued to hold on to him tightly, fearing to let him go, why would he do that, Shika, troublesome, I have no idea, Ino, but we need to get him to the hospital fast, the shadow master replied as he bent down to take the unconscious blonde from Ino, only to be stopped when she refused to let him go. Ino, you're going to have to let him go. We gotta get him to Tsunade as fast as we can. Reluctantly, she released her hold on her friend's still body and allowed Shikamaru to pick him up in his arms as they all took off at top speed for the hospital. I don't believe it, Tsunade muttered as she and Shizune stormed down the main hallway of the hospital. They had just come from visiting Sakura and Sasuke both, who were not in the best of shape at the moment. The lovers were physically and emotionally exhausted from the events of the day, having to first explain everything to Team Asuma and then to the Hokage. I just can't fucking believe it. God, I need a drink. I just can't understand it. Shizune sighed as she walked next to her master. How could they do that to Naruto? I mean, he did everything for the two of them. To betray him like that. They were thinking with their fucking crotches and nothing else. Tsunade growled, causing many doctors and nurses to cringe and seek cover. Tsunade growling was never a good sign. They're ninjas, for God's sake. I would expect better of them, to use their heads and not be slaved to their hormones like a bunch of stupid fucking teenagers. 
They're only 22 or so, Lady Tsunade, they're still young, kids really. Tsunade turned bright red at that last remark and spun on her heel and confronted her apprentice. They gave up the right to be fucking kids the moment they accepted their Konoha headbands. They are ninja. Our lives are different from those of civilians, we don't have the right or the luxury of acting like everyone else does. My god, we are trained since an early age to kill, you can't get much more serious than that. I would expect all my ninja to act as such, not as some damn animals in rut. The blonde barked before she turned back around and began to head back out the way they came. Shizun, first thing tomorrow morning. I want all fitness reports and personnel files on Sasuke Uchiha and Sakura Namikaze on my desk for immediate review. I knew we should have killed that bastard. Yes, Lady Hokage? Shizun began to reply when the front doors burst open, revealing a very agitated Ino Yamanaka, followed closely by Shikamaru, who was carrying a body in his arms. Somebody, help us please, Ino screamed, looking like the victim of a movie slasher, covered in blood head to toe. Her eyes were wide in desperation as she scanned the assembled staff before they alighted on the Hokage. Lady Tsunade, thank god, he's hurt, he's hurt really bad, who's hurt, Ino? Tsunade asked as she instantly went into medic mode and strode over to the horrific looking blonde, trying to look her over for wounds, what's going on? Him, Shikamaru stepped forward with a familiar looking man in his arms, who was easily covered in as much if not more blood than Ino. Sadness covered the shadow master's face as he stood before his leader. No, Tsunade whispered as her eyes widened in recognition. Her skin went pale as her heart sank. Lying before her was the closest thing she had to a son, Naruto? Oh god, baby, what happened to you? Shizun, get me a gurney and clear an operating room, now. Tsunade barked as she took the limp form of her child from Shikamaru's arms and spun around, placing him on the gurney, which had appeared from nowhere. You too. Follow us and tell me what the hell happened. Ino filled her in on what she had found and what Naruto was doing as they raced to the operating room, causing Tsunade's heart to break, thinking about Naruto hurting so much that he wanted to end it all. When they hit the doors of the operating theater, Ino and Shikamaru stopped and took seats in the waiting area as Shizun, Tsunade, and several of her most trusted assistants continued on and began the work of saving the Kayubi container's life. Several hours passed as Ino and Shikamaru carried on their vigil outside of the operating room. Every time the door would open for one reason or another, Ino's eyes would widen, hoping to see either Tsunade or Shizun coming out to update them. Unfortunately, this was never the case, as either a medic or a nurse would come rushing out and come right back as soon as possible with some sort of supplies in their hands. After waiting a total of four hours, Shikamaru looked over to teammate and grimaced. You know, Ino, you really don't have to wait here, he said gently as he stood from his seat and stretched his sore muscles. Naruto wasn't the lightest person in the world. I can come and get you when I hear anything. It's, it's okay, Shika, the blonde replied as she continued to stare straight ahead. The memories of what she had seen kept playing before her eyes. She felt that stinging that she hated so much beginning to return to her eyes. Biting her lip, she turned toward her friend. Why did he do it, Shika? I know that he felt betrayed, he had to have. But, to do that? Why was he trying to hurt us so much? Didn't he know he could have come to any of us? We're his friends, damn it. Tears broke free once more and left pale tracks in the dried blood that was on her face. Shikamaru sighed as he knelt down before her and took her hands in his own, looking deeply into her eyes. Ino, listen to me, okay? I don't know why Naruto did this, but I have a pretty good idea. It wasn't to hurt you or any of the rest of us, you know he would never purposely hurt his friends. It's just, Shikamaru sighed once more before he continued on. Look, you know how much he loves Sakura, right? Ino nodded her head. Well imagine, damn, he muttered as he reached up and wiped away a tear that began to form in his eye. Imagine how he felt when he found out what she had done, alright? Now, remember how happy Naruto was when he found out he was going to be a father? Yeah, I remember. He couldn't keep his damn mouth shut for five minutes before he would start all over again about it. She snorted as a small smirk made its way to her face. Shikamaru smiled back before becoming serious again. Yeah, Sakura and the baby were his whole world. He took her to all her doctor appointments. He waited on her hand and foot. He treated her like a princess. I know a hell of a lot of the women in this village were extremely jealous of Sakura over it. 
Eno nodded, glad that the blood was hiding her blush, she was easily one of them. Now, he continued, how would you feel if all that was suddenly ripped from you in one fell swoop? Then add to that you lost them to your best friend. It was probably more than Naruto could handle, Eno. Even the strongest of people can break. Another tear broke free from Shikamaru's control as he placed himself in Naruto's position. The very thought of Tamari leaving him for someone else was enough to make him want to put a kanai through his own chest. He really had to talk to her as soon as he could. I guess, I guess that I wouldn't want to live, either, she mumbled as she buried her face in her hands. She didn't want Shikamaru see her cry any more than he already had. I just thought he was stronger than that. Like I said, everyone has a breaking point. Even that knucklehead, Shikamaru replied as he took a closer look at her, you know, you really should go get cleaned up. What? Why? I know I'm filthy, and it's kinda gross, but I don't care. I want to be here for Naruto, she barked, flames once more jumping from her eyes and doing their best to incinerate her friend. Shikamaru's expression never changed as he continued to stare into her light blue eyes. It's not that, Eno. The Nara air replied as his eyes shifted from her eyes to her stomach as he pointed to the jagged cut that marred her skin, that. What the hell happened, huh? Oh, that, she said as she looked down and looked at the gash on her stomach, that happened when I was trying to help Naruto. He didn't attack you, did he? Shikamaru asked, blanching somewhat. The idea of one friend attacking another didn't set well with him whatsoever. Ino's eyes bugged out as she began to wave her hands in front of herself. No. That's not what happened, she said quickly, trying to assuage Shikamaru's fears. When he stabbed himself the last time, I pulled the kunai out and threw his arm over to the side. I, uh, was kinda leaning over him at the time and was a little too close to the blade. It cut me as it went by. It was just an accident. Shikamaru sighed once more as he stood up and grabbed Ino's arm and drew her up as well. Shika, what the hell are you doing? Ino barked as her teammate began to drag her down the hall until they came to the nurse's station. I'm looking after my best friend, Shikamaru replied, causing Ino to blush once more as he turned to the closest nurse. Excuse me, I need to see that Miss Yamanaka's wound is tended to, then I need to see if there is somewhere she can clean up and rest a bit. The nurse looked at the blood-covered blonde and cocked her head to the side, puzzled. Uh, sure, we can heal her, but why doesn't she just go home afterward? The nurse asked innocently, which turned out to be the wrong thing for her to say. Now just wait one minute here. If you think that I'm going to leave. Ino spat before she felt Shikamaru's hand on her shoulder. I'm afraid leaving is not an option, ma'am. You see, a friend of ours is in surgery right now, and my troublesome friend here wants to be here for him when he gets out. Shikamaru sighed as he leaned against the desktop, really wanting nothing more than to take a nice long nap himself. Really, who's the friend? The nurse asked sarcastically, not really wanting to know. She was hoping that they would just leave so she could get her paperwork finished and then leave for the night. Shikamaru frowned at her rather poor attitude, then grinned inwardly as he leaned forward and stared her straight in the eye. Lord Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, perhaps you've heard of him? You know, the Toad Sage and next in line to be Hokage? He was brought in several hours ago, if you wish to bother to look it up. Now, please get me a medic and find a place where Miss Yamanaka can rest and clean up. Uh, why yes sir, the young nurse replied as her eyes grew wide at the mere mention of the Kayubi container. She quickly stood and bade them to follow her to their nearest examination room, where she quickly disappeared only to be replaced by a medic soon after. After healing her wound, the medic was kind enough to show Ino and Shikamaru to a separate room. You can take a shower back there. He motioned toward the back of the room before turning to the racks of bunk beds that lined the wall. This is where many of us sleep when we need to take a nap during our shifts. You actually sleep while on duty? Shikamaru asked, sounding somewhat perturbed at the idea. Ino snorted and crossed her arms, glaring at her friend. Like you're one to talk, Mr. Cloudwatcher, she quipped as Shikamaru shot her a glare before turning back to the medic. Sir, we tend to draw 36 and 48 hour shifts we have to have some rest during that time. You wouldn't want an exhausted doctor working on you or someone you love, would you? The medic replied, his eyebrow cocked. Shikamaru had the good sense to look embarrassed as he apologized. The medic smiled and waved it off as he left the two of them alone in the room. Now, march your butt in there and get cleaned up, Ino, Shikamaru ordered, 
causing Eno to frown and cross her arms under her breasts, glaring at him. He glared back as the two of them stood there for several seconds before Eno broke the stalemate. Yeah, whatever, Mr. Nara, she snorted as she began to walk toward the shower area before she stopped. Uh, Shika, what is it, Eno? He asked, exasperated that she was stalling. Eno looked at him sheepishly, then looked back toward her feet. Uh, I don't have anything clean to wear, can you? Shikamaru rolled his eyes before he chuckled a bit. I'll have something waiting for you when you come out, he replied softly as he tried to shoo her toward the showers. Eno, however, bit her lip and looked back at him, looking lost and panicked at the same time. But, but you'll let me know when he comes out right? How can you do that if you're not here, huh? No, I think it's better if, if. Tears began to slide down her cheeks again, breaking Shikamaru's heart. He crossed over to her quickly and took the sobbing blonde in his arms. Shish, Eno, it's going to be alright, okay? He'll pull through. We're talking about Naruto, you know? He's not going to let anything like this kill him, no matter how he feels. He said, trying his best to soothe his hurting friend. He rubbed her back until the tears and sobs slowed down, almost stopping completely. You are most troublesome, Eno, you know that? Look, I promise I'll stay here and let you now when he gets out of surgery. I'll find something for you to wear, but for now you really need a shower and some rest. Oh, okay Shika, Eno responded as she wiped the tears from her eyes and stood back and seeing the caring in her best friend's eyes. Thank you, you really care for him a lot, don't you? Shikamaru asked, knowing the answer deep down. He hoped that she'd be able to help Naruto through all of this. I, uh, well, he's my friend, Shika. He saved my life, you know? Shikamaru nodded in agreement, his eyes soft. I, uh, I don't know right now. With that, she reached into a nearby cabinet and pulled several towels and washcloths before retreating to the showers. Man, this is so screwed up, Shikamaru muttered as he left to find something for Ino to wear, shaking his head from side to side. Ino stepped into the shower and allowed the hot water to run over her near flawless skin, the waves of heat working miracles as they washed over her body. She hadn't realized when she started how physically tense she had been. Her nerves were shot, that was a given, especially seeing how someone so close and dear to her had tried very hard to take his own life. But she never expected her body to react this way, despite the medical training that she had that told her otherwise. She just had no personal experience of it until now. She sighed as she tried very hard to not think of the events of the past day. In the words of her teammate, it was troublesome. Very, very troublesome. Reaching for the soap and her washcloth, she began to scrub and scrub, ridding her body of the crimson curtain that had dried and covered her like a cloak of sin. Eno watched as the red sloughed off and mixed with the water and poured down the drain, wishing that her problems and troubles would follow. Alas, that was not to be. Naruto, she whispered as she ducked her head under the streaming water to cover her tears as they once more forced their way from her cornflower blue eyes. Pouring a handful of thick shampoo in her hand, she began to wash her long platinum hair, trying so hard to wash out the blood and memories. You know, Ino, Naruto had said one time when she was feeling particularly down after that one horrible breakup that hurt her so badly, you really do have very beautiful hair. It's soft, it reminds me of a warm summer breeze. Ino shuddered as she felt his fingers playing with her hair, tracing it down to the shorter than usual ends. That makes no sense, idiot, she had muttered darkly that day, despite the compliment. She thought he was trying to just make her feel better, she didn't think he really meant it. Hiro always said it was plain and boring, that's why I cut it. Naruto growled at the mention of her former boyfriend, the one that had done so much damage to her. What do you mean it makes no sense? Naruto asked her as he continued to stroke her hair. It's like when on a hot summer's day you would do anything for relief, and then at the hottest part of the day, a soft breeze would blow through and just barely touch your cheek. You would do anything for that touch again because it's the softest, most comfortable thing you have ever felt. You would wish it would come back and linger even longer, but it doesn't and it leaves you wanting for more. That's what I meant, Eno. She remembered blushing as badly as Hinata used to do at his words, but all he did was smile. I always thought your hair looked so much prettier when it was longer, I'm surprised that you cut it for him. Seriously, the dude was a dick. You better quit flirting with me or Sakura will slug you into next week. Ino smirked as warm feelings began to break through the ice that had surrounded her heart since the breakup. 
Naruto chuckled then shook his head as he held out a hand to her. Ain't flirting, it's the truth. Now come on, you need something to eat and so do I. He replied as he began to drag her toward his favorite ramen stand. Ino groaned, not ramen again, come on, how can you eat that stuff all the time? She whined as she followed her friend and took a stool next to him. What's wrong with ramen? It's either this or dango. Anything else and someone might think we were on a date or something, Naruto retorted, causing his blonde friend to snort. A rare smile graced her lips as she realized just how much her friends cared for her. Ino shook her head of the memories that refused to be silenced. That little encounter there was the reason she had began to grow her hair long once more. She continued to scrub her hair until she was sure all traces of blood had been rinsed away. The tears were another story, however, as the sight of him plunging a kanai into his belly danced before her eyes again and again. Breaking down with great sobs, Ino slammed her fist into the tile wall before her as she slowly slid to the floor, the hot water still raining down upon her crumpled form. Her cries of anguish echoed off the walls of the shower as she poured her anguish out to the world. Ino wasn't sure how long she had lain there nude on the shower floor, but she knew one thing. She needed to get out before she passed out from fatigue. Slowly, painfully, she pulled herself up from the floor and turned off the water before reaching for her towels and wrapping them around herself. She stepped out and looked at herself in the foggy mirror, grimacing at what she saw. God, I look like crap, she moaned as she patted her hair as dry as best she could before running her fingers through her waist-length locks, trying rather unsuccessfully to remove any tangles and knots that had occurred. Grunting in frustration, she quickly dried off the rest of the way and then noticed the set of scrubs that Shikamaru had scrounged for her sitting on the counter. Well, it's better than nothing, she muttered as she pulled the clothing on and walked to the closest bunk and promptly passed out. Several hours passed after Shikamaru had sent Ino to get cleaned up and rest, but the lazy shadow master kept true to his word and sat outside the operating room, waiting news on his injured friend. He valiantly fought sleep and had substituted his normal cigarettes with cup upon cup of hot, black coffee, working so hard to stay awake and alert. The awake part was easier than the alert, especially seeing how he had stayed up all night waiting for news. The sun was now rising slowly above the horizon, casting its rays throughout the windows of the hospital. This did nothing whatsoever to help his mood. Damn troublesome blondes, he muttered sadly as he continued his vigil outside the operating room, his thoughts turning more and more to Naruto, and to his own rocky relationship with Tamari. Shikamaru remembered how it was Naruto that finally kicked him in the ass and made him realize how he truly felt about the sand kunoichi. Hell, Naruto even offered to pay for their first date just so Shikamaru would take her somewhere nice. He promptly refused and thanked his friend for his generosity, then took Tamari out to the fanciest restaurant in all of the fire country. It may have put one hell of a dent in his wallet, but it had been worth it. God, I never thanked him for that, he whispered as he felt his heart sink like a ton of lead. Now, he might never get the chance to do so. And to top it off, things with his girlfriend had taken a turn for the worse when he started spending more and more time with Kurunai and her child. Tamari was not happy at all with that. He sighed, and now I've fucked things up with Tamari. I'm afraid I've let you down, bro. Well, it's never too late to make amends, a female voice said, causing Shikamaru's head to snap up. His eyes widened as he watched Shizune take a seat right across from him. He had been so lost in his own thoughts that he had failed to notice the doors open, nor had he seen or noticed anyone leaving. Shizune, where's Lady Tsunade? How's Naruto? Is he? Shikamaru sputtered as he looked at the dark-haired medic across from him, bolting to his feet in an instant. Before Shizune could reply, the doors opened as several medics pushed a gurney before them. Lying on it, heavily wrapped in bandages, was a bewhiskered blonde whose skin looked as pale as death. He watched as they rushed him down the hall and around the corner in the blink of an eye. Holy shit, what's wrong? The Hokage went to find Ino to let her know what's going on. As for Naruto, well... Shizune said sadly as Shikamaru felt his heart sink even further as the look on the medic's face promised anything but good news. Ino's sleep was far from restful, as she tossed and turned on the bunk. Her eyes moved rapidly back and forth behind her eyelids as moans escaped her lips. Her platinum blonde hair was tossed to and fro as she violently shook her head in her sleep. Ino, Naruto called out as he held his hand out for her, 
his wide foxy grin covering his face. Eno felt her heart leap when she saw that he had no wounds on him. She smiled brightly as she began to run toward him. Naruto, you're okay, she chirped as she continued to run toward him, only to realize that she wasn't getting any closer to him. He continued to hold his hand out for her. She began to run even harder, but she felt as if her feet were caught in mud up to her ankles. The more she moved, the slower she went. Eno, come take my hand, I'll help you, he said, still holding his hand out for her. Unfortunately, her movements got slower and slower. She felt as if all her energy was being drained from her body. Looking back toward him, she saw the sadness in his eyes as his hand began to slowly fall back to his side. Eno couldn't stand to see such pain in his eyes, so she doubled her efforts to reach him. Hang on, Naruto, I'm coming, watch out, she screamed as she watched Sasuke and Sakura waltz up behind Naruto. Evil grins plastered on their faces and kanai in their hands. Naruto looked at Eno, a puzzled look on his face that quickly turned to a look of sheer pain as twin kanai burst out of his chest from behind, spilling his blood and sending a shower of crimson in the air. The warm, sticky liquid hit Eno in the face as she watched Naruto fall to the ground, as the perpetrators of the crime threw their weapons to the ground, turned arm in arm and lazily walked into the distance. The two looked lovingly into each other's eyes as they disappeared over the horizon. Eno, Naruto said softly as he reached out for her once more. Suddenly, Eno was free and she ran at full speed to his side, falling to her knees and pulling him into her lap. Oh God, hang on, Naruto, I'll help you, she wailed as she tried to stop the bleeding, which was only getting worse. He looked into her eyes, hurt clearly present. Eno, why didn't you save me? He whispered as his voice began to falter. Eno gasped at the accusation in his voice. Her heart sank as she saw the anger in his eyes begin to build. What, what are you talking about, Naruto? She stammered as his face contorted in rage. He was giving off a huge amount of killer intent, making the hair on the back of her neck stand on end. I, I tried, I couldn't get to you, I was stuck. Liar, he seethed as the blood pouring from his wounds was now inches deep covering the ground for miles around. I saved your fucking life, and this is how you repay me, you fucking tramp. Eno's eyes widened at how viscous and cruel her friend was acting toward her. Tears poured from her eyes and mixed with the ever-deepening pool of life water that now surrounded them. No, Naruto, please, I tried, I really, really did. Please forgive me, she cried as she watched his hand break free of the crimson lake and shoot forward, grabbing her by her throat. You want my forgiveness? Naruto mocked as he began to sink lower and lower into the lake of blood until only his head remained above the surface, glaring at her with hate-filled eyes. Fine, then join me in death, you worthless slut. Come and die with me. No, please. Ino screamed as Naruto dragged her below the surface, the coppery fluid filling her nose and mouth. She struggled to break free, and managed to catch a quick breath of air before being pulled back down toward his manically grinning face. Eno, he called to her as he dragged her deeper and deeper, her lungs burning with the need to breath. Naruto, no please, she begged as she sank deeper and deeper. Eno, his voice said once more, but his lips never moved, for they were stilled in death. Eno's eyes grew wide and she began to panic. She struggled to break free, but his grip was like that of steel. Naruto, she sighed softly as the air escaped her lungs, bringing on the dark embrace of death. Her eyes rolled back into her head as her struggle ceased. Ino, Naruto, the blonde Kunoichi screamed as she bolted straight up in her bed, sweat pouring down her face and soaking her clothes. Her breathing was shallow and ragged as her eyes scanned the room in desperation, trying hard to fix her bearings as to where she was. She felt a hand shaking her shoulder. Ino, calm down, Tsunade said as she tried to get the young woman's attention. It took a second or two, but finally, Cornflower Blue Eyes locked onto those of her leader, bringing the hysterical Yamanaka into full consciousness. Lady, Lady Tsunade? Ino asked as she finally remembered where she was. Shaking her head for a second, Ino was able to focus properly. How's Naruto? Well, Ino, I'm not going to lie to you, Tsunade said sadly as she took Ino's hands into her own, feeling the trembling coming from the young lady before her, I'm afraid he's... Ino's jaw dropped as she broke down in heart-wrenching sobs. The only thing Tsunade could do was to reach out and put her arms around her, doing what she could to help the sobbing girl in front of her. 
Akoma, Shikamaru sighed as he stood next to his best friend as the two of them overlooked the bed of their fallen comrade. Naruto looked so pathetic with IVs running into his arms and various wires leading from his chest to a nearby machine. The slow, steady beeping reminding everyone in the room that the blonde Kyubi container was alive, but just barely. Is there any chance he'll wake up anytime soon? After all, he's had worse wounds, and his prisoner has always pulled him through. We're not sure when he's going to wake up, Shikamaru, Tsunade replied as she looked first at Naruto, then at his chart as she struggled to remain professional. If he wakes up at all, that is. Something just isn't right here. You're right. Normally the fox would heal him up and restore him to normal. Well, as normal as Naruto can ever be, Shikamaru muttered before Ino slugged him in the arm, the tears still evident in her eyes. OWW, shut up Shika and let Lady Tsunade speak, the disheveled blonde barked as she glared at her friend. To his credit, he didn't get angry and just laid a hand on her shoulder, a caring look in his eye. Ino calmed visibly, but the tears were ever present in her eyes. Anyway, normally, the Kayubi would heal Naruto up pretty quickly, but that just isn't happening. The healing is there, but it is going at a much, much slower pace than normal. If he was anyone else, he'd be dead, plain and simple, Tsunade continued as she watched Ino collapse into the chair next to her fellow blonde's bed and lean up against it, resting her head next to Naruto's. Tsunade was worried about how badly Ino was taking Naruto's condition. We've repaired the damage he caused himself but we're not sure how badly the blood loss affected his brain. We can't even tell if there was any brain damage yet. Is there anything we can do to help him? Ino asked quietly, loss clearly resounding in her voice. Tsunade had to swallow past the lump in her throat before she could answer. It hurt her so bad to see Naruto laying there like that and knowing that there was nothing she could physically do. We're going to wait a few days to see if he'll wake up on his own, Ino. If not, then I'll have a mind walker, probably your father, enter his mind to see if the problem is there. The Hokage drew in a ragged breath, until then, all we can do is be there for him. We can talk to him, let him know his friends are all here and looking out for him, missing him. You Yamanakas know better than anyone the working of the human mind, you know that talking to someone in that state can help bring them out. So you're telling us that there is nothing we can do, Shikamaru snarled as he reached into his pocket for his cigarettes before a glare from the Hokage stopped him in his tracks. He was about to say something else when a weak voice interrupted. No, we can be here for him, Shika. We can tell him how much he means to us. How much we miss him. How much we need him, Ino said sadly as she continued to lay her head next to Naruto's. Shikamaru's heart broke when he saw the condition of his two friends, helping to drain away most of his anger. His rage against Sakura and Sasuke, however, could not be quelled. Lady Tsunade, what are we going to do about those two assholes? He seethed as he watched Tsunade's eyes harden. He heard her knuckles crack as she clenched her fists, and visibly paled as she stared right through him, right down to his soul. We aren't going to do anything, Mr. Nara. You are going to be here to help your friends. If there are any actions to be taken against those two individuals, I shall be the one to take them. If there is anything that can legally be done to them, then I shall be the one to take such actions. Do I make myself clear, Mr. Nara? Her eyes blazed, but there seemed to be a hint of a smirk on her lips. The light went off in Shikamaru's head as he grinned most savagely. Crystal, Lady Hokage, he answered as he nodded his head, then turned and took a seat on the other side of Naruto's bed. If Ino had been in any condition to notice, she could have actually heard the gears turning in Shikamaru's mind as he sat there and supported his friends. Tsunade spun on her heel and marched out of the room and straight to her office. She had some matters to attend to. The next few days passed entirely too slowly for Naruto's friends. After two days of sitting by Naruto's side, Shikamaru finally had to force an exhausted Ino to go home and rest up. She refused, of course, until Shikamaru asked Neji and Lee to physically pick her up and drag her home. She finally relented when Hinata convinced her that Naruto wouldn't want her to suffer because of him. With great reluctance, Ino went back home, escorted by Neji and Lee. When she walked in and told her parents what had happened, she broke down yet again. After she had calmed down, her mother put her to bed while her father, Inochi, quickly left to see Tsunade. Naruto's friends were greatly distressed at his condition, 
and when they learned what had occurred that drove him such actions, their reactions were mixed. Hinata had cried almost as much as Ino had, despite the fact that she no longer had a crush on the crazy blonde. She still held great admiration for Naruto, and used him as a beacon to light her way through the trials and tribulations of life. Her heart felt great sorrow for her friend and his condition, and swore that if that pink-haired slut and her backstabbing anal retentive bastard came anywhere close to Naruto, she would gentle fist them where the sun doesn't shine. Everyone was shocked at her use of words and how angry she was becoming. Nobody wanted to be those two any time in the near future. The others mirrored her sentiments. Kiba wanted to slaughter them both and feed them to his clan's dogs. Neji and Lee wanted to rip Sasuke's eyes from his head and feed them to Sakura before crushing them both and disposing of their bodies. Choji didn't say much, but he had lost his appetite and sat next to his friend, keeping vigil until Ino could come back. Shino was more than willing to feed the traitorous two to his beetles. Tenten broke down, which surprised everybody. Her reaction to the fact that Sasuke and Sakura had betrayed Naruto was as expected, violent in the extreme. All the guys cringed when she said she would start off by castrating Sasuke with a red-hot kanai and shoving his balls down his throat, and by the time she was done most of them were actually feeling ill to their stomachs. They continued to get louder and more angry before Shikamaru stood and waved for them to be quiet. Listen, guys, as much as I'd like to go along with what you want to do, we legally can't without getting ourselves in a whole hell of a lot of trouble. Do you think that Naruto would want anything to happen to us? Shikamaru argued as the crowd grew quiet, thinking of their injured friend. Lady Tsunade said that she would take care of those two with every legal means that she could. Now, there isn't anything thing that we can do overtly to make those two pay, no matter how much I want to. Shikamaru saw a few eyebrows raise at his pronouncement. Inwardly, he grinned. Well, what can we do, Shikamaru? Lee asked, his face looking most unyouthful. Those two must pay for their crimes. But Lee, what about the baby? He's an innocent in all this mess. We can't go and punish him for the crimes of his parents. Hinata argued as the tears continued to stream down her face. Neji walked over and put an arm around his cousin to comfort her. Hinata, no one here blames the child, and none of us would do anything to harm him. Right guys? Neji asked, looking at everyone in the room. They all agreed. We can't deprive him of his parents either. Neji, you, I, and Naruto all know how that feels. We can't do that to him, no matter what we want to do, the lavender-haired beauty sobbed, her word carrying great weight with the others. You know, Naruto would make a good father, Tenten piped up, causing all eyes to turn to her. I'm sure that he wouldn't mind raising the baby, seeing how he thought it was his for so long. Some of the others began to think deeply on this, but how can we know that Naruto wouldn't turn on the child? seeing how it isn't his. Shino asked from the corner where he had stationed himself. Earlier, he had sent some of his beetles to act as lookouts in the hallway before they began their discussions. The corner was the best place to concentrate on his sentries. Naruto would never do that. Hinata barked, her eyes wide and glaring at the others. He would love the child. He would never blame it for something that it had no control over. He knows what that is like. The rest of ninja in the room looked sheepish and nodded in agreement. They all knew how Naruto had suffered because the Kayubi had been sealed in him at birth. Naruto would never treat anyone like that. Guys, guys, that discussion doesn't matter, we've gotten sidetracked. We can't do anything to seriously harm or kill those two. Tsunade has put her foot down on that. Shikamaru called out, getting their attention once more. Everyone grumbled a bit and calmed back down. Then what can we do? Shikamaru. Hinata asked, mirroring Lee's question from earlier. She let out a small, eep, when she saw the vicious grin on his face. Us? Well, we can make their life a living hell, he growled as he began to outline his plan. Their eyes all lit up as they began to marvel at the simplicity, the sheer brilliance, and the downright underhandedness of his master plan. The meeting continued for a few hours more before Shino alerted them to someone heading for the room. They quickly broke up and departed, leaving Hinata and Choji behind to watch over their friend. Remember, folks, Operation. Vengeance starts first thing tomorrow. The Shadow Master whispered to the rest of his conspirators as they turned and parted ways outside the hospital. The sun was beginning to set as Shikamaru began his trip to a small cottage that held the keys to his heart. 
Tamari was sitting on the sofa with her legs tucked under her as she read the trashy little romance novel she had purchased when she had gotten back from Suna. She was a tad miffed that Tsunade hadn't had any time to see her yet, seeing how Gara had sent several key documents with her to discuss with the Hokage. Shizun had told her that Tsunade was indisposed for the next couple of days and that she would call Tamari when she was free. The sand kunoichi snorted as she closed the book and threw it onto the coffee table and picked up her teacup and headed back to the kitchen for a fresh cup. She was restless, and if there was something that Tamari hated to be was idle. She liked to stay on the move, unlike that lazy boyfriend of hers. She felt anger and sadness well up in her heart at the thought of Shikamaru. She had been in town for several days now and the Nara heir had yet to show up to greet her. Huh, probably screwing that red-eyed bitch, she muttered as she placed her hands on the counter and wrestled to control her feelings. Tamari wasn't a girly girl, one that would sob and cry at the slightest thing. No, she was a tough, hard-nosed kunoichi from the village hidden in the sand. She was the sister to the current case cage, and she had to be just as tough and strong as her little brother. What did it matter that the man she loved spent all his time with a junin that was old enough to be his mother, well, maybe older sister? She felt the hated stinging begin behind her eyes, and fought hard to remain calm and aloof. She almost succeeded, except for that one rebellious tear that forced its way out. Stupid bastard, making me cry. She growled as she snatched some tissue from the counter and wiped her eyes before grabbing her tea and heading back to the living room of the little cottage she always stayed in whenever she came back to Konoha. She remembered grinning like a fool when Naruto waltzed into a meeting between Tsunade and Gara and casually threw a set of keys to his good friend. Gara was for his part looked rather confused until he told everyone to follow him out the door and ride down the road, stopping before the quaint little cottage she was currently residing in. Well, we can't have you staying in a hotel every time you show up, the crazy blonde announced as he and his wife stood side by side in front of the cottage. So welcome to the official Suna Embassy to Konoha. He and Sakura had huge grins on their faces while everyone else stood there bug-eyed, even Gara. Uh, that's great Naruto, Gara replied, still shocked at what his friend had just showed him. His voice sounded the same to most people, but all his friends and family could tell the emotion in his voice. But, where did it come from? Well, from us, of course. Naruto giggled maniacally as he opened the door, ushering everyone inside. All jaws dropped as they took in the cozy beauty of the place. From, you? Tamari was flabbergasted. She knew her fellow blonde liked to take care of his friends, but this was ridiculous. She turned to stare at the couple before her. Both were still sporting shit-eating grins. Well, yeah. Just consider it a congratulation present for making Case Cage. Naruto smirked, having a blast at seeing Tamari and Gara so stunned. Gara tilted his head quizzically before speaking. Naruto, I have been Case Cage for several years now, Gara replied, not harshly. He was still greatly confused. He watched Naruto's face fall into a greatly exaggerated pout. I'm sorry I'm late, man. Just don't kill me with your horrible, horrible sand. Oh great and powerful case cage. Please, he groveled as he fell to his knees before his friend. Gara tried with all his might to keep from smiling, but his face finally cracked some when he saw the puppy dog eyes his friend was giving him. What happened next was what caused Gara to actually laugh. Naruto, quit acting like a retard, his wife scolded as she reached over and punched him in the head, knocking the poor toad sage over onto his side. He stood up and nursed to goose egg that beginning to form on his head. OWW, Sakura, why did you hit me? He sobbed as great crocodile tears poured from his eyes. He cringed when his wife snarled at him. Help, granny, help me. This is spousal abuse. I have witnesses. He never saw the punch coming from Tsunade that sent him over the sofa. How many times have I told you not to call me that? I'm not old, damn it. Tsunade seed as she watched the young blonde sit up rather wobbly, looking around with a look of expectation on his face. What's wrong, brat? Nothing, I'm just waiting for the lightning bolt, he smirked before he saw stars once more. A third lump formed on his head as Tsunade walked over him and joined the rest in a tour of the place. Hokage 2, N-A-R-U-T-O-0. Tamari grinned when she remembered that day. Sakura had showed them the guest rooms, as well as the little rack they had provided for her fans, as well as a small alcove for Gara's gourd and closet for Konkuro's puppets. 
Tamari had finally gotten her to admit that the cottage was one that belonged to Namikaze clan, and seeing how Naruto was the official head of the clan, he decided to donate it to Gara and Suna. It had taken them several weeks to get it looking good, and to their credit, the Namikazes had done a great job. I wonder if Sakura's had her baby yet? She wondered as she curled back up on the sofa and turned on the television. She hadn't seen either Sakura or Naruto since she had come back, and now that she thought about it, she hadn't seen any of her friends at all. She made sure to get out every day so that she wouldn't go stir crazy, and normally when she would go on her walks, she would see at least one or two people she knew. This time, however, something was off. Konoha didn't feel right for some reason. It was, subdued. It didn't feel right at all. Shaking her head clear such thoughts, she settled down and was becoming engrossed in a show about three emotionally challenged teenagers piloting blue, red, and purple robots when a knock at the door brought her back to the real world. Annoyed that someone would finally come to see her when she was beginning to settle down for the night, she leapt up and stormed over to the door and jerked it open. What she saw was the last thing she had ever expected. Uh, hi, Mari, Shikamaru said hoarsely, his head bowed and his eyes refusing to rise up to meet hers. Tamari felt the anger come back as she looked at her boyfriend, the one who had been neglecting her so much recently. Huh, well, Mr. Nara, to what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Did you finally deem me worthy of your time? I mean, I can understand why you would think that something like visiting your girlfriend when she's back in town for the first time in weeks would be too troublesome and not worthy of your time. After all, there are other, more important, people, to, see? Tamari stopped her tirade as Shikamaru looked up her, his eyes finally locking onto hers. She gasped as she saw the pain, the sadness, the desolation, and the rest of the emotional turmoil that he had gone through for the past several days. Shikamaru? Mari, I, I'm, oh god, he whispered as his chin began to quiver and the water began to spill from his eyes. He deflated as he sank to his knees and wrapped his arms around her waist. God, Mari, I'm sorry, I'm so, so sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, he kept repeating as his tears soaked the front of her kimono, his great sobs racking both his and her bodies as the pent-up emotions he had been suppressing surged to the surface for none better to see. She was the only one whom he could relax his control around and actually act like a normal person around. That was one thing that had drawn the two together, besides the fact that she was a knockout with awesome legs, to paraphrase said Shadow Master. Shika, Shikamaru? She asked softly as his grip around her waist refused to budge. She looked down at the top of his head and placed her hand on him, trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Please, Mari, I'm so sorry, don't leave me. I loved you so much. The thought of losing you is driving me insane. It makes me want to rip my heart out. I never meant to hurt you, I swear. Please, 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 he continued as Temari's eyes widened and her mouth dropped open, drawing in a gasping breath. Slowly, she knelt down in front of him and reached out and cupped his face in her hands, looking deeply into his eyes. Shika, baby, tell me what's wrong, she said gently as the sight of the tears pouring from his eyes was breaking her heart. Sure, she had been upset with him spending so much time with Kuranai, but she had never seriously considered leaving him. She knew that it was just his insane loyalty to his dead sensei that had caused him to swear to look after her and their little girl. Tamari, I love you so much. The thought of you not being in my life, God, it hurts. Hun, I want to be with you for the rest of my life. I swear, I'll retire as a Konoha shinobi and follow you to Suna if you want me to. Please don't leave me. I want to be your husband, will you marry me, Tamari? I have a ring and everything, it's my grandmother's and it's so pretty and I know it'll look great on you and... Shikamaru kept babbling as he began reaching into the pockets of his Junin vest, feeling around for the ring. Now I know something's horribly wrong here, she thought as she filed the marriage proposal into the back of her mind as she tried to calm her lover. Shikamaru, I need to you slow down and tell me what is going on. Take deep breaths and try to relax. After a moment or two, the tears slowed and he began to gather his thoughts. Tamari, some, recent events have caused me to, re-evaluate my life. Our lives, as ninja, and our lives as human beings. I began to realize how badly I've treated you, I swear I didn't mean to. It made me realize how short our lives can be, and how one horrible day can seriously fuck things up, he said as he began to tell her of the situation between Sakura, Sasuke, and Naruto 
of Naruto's heartbreak at finding out his wife was unfaithful and her child wasn't his after all. Shikamaru told her about Naruto's suicide attempt, and how Ino found him dying, and how badly she was taking it. He relayed the reactions of their friends and how they all wanted to punish the two, but Tsunade had tied their hands, but they were going to take care of things in their own way. He explained to her how he realized just how much he really loved her and how he didn't want to spend another day alone, without her. By the time he was finished, the rough and tough Kunoichi Tamari of the sand had just as many tears flowing down her eyes as her boyfriend did. Her heart broke for her friend, but almost immediately began to heal as she wrapped her arms around his neck and placed her forehead to his, looking his straight in the eye. Yes, Shikamaru, she whispered as a small smile formed on both their faces, I'll marry you. Hey, how are you doing? Sasuke asked as he and Sakura were walking down the street towards her and Naruto's house. They left the baby in the hospital so that Shizune could check him out. He had cried so much his first few days that they were worried that something was wrong with him. Shizune promised that she would take good care of him and she would call them the moment that they learned anything. I'm, I'm okay, Sakura replied, just a bit winded. She still hadn't recovered completely from giving birth, and she and Sasuke were worried that they hadn't seen Naruto since the baby was born. They managed to convince Shizune that Sakura was ready to head back home, despite the medic's objections. As quickly as they could, they packed Sakura's stuff up in a scroll and took off for the Namikaze home. You sure? He asked once more as he watched his pink-haired lover struggle down the road. Quickly making up his mind, he walked over and snatched her up from the ground, bridal style. Sasuke, what are you doing? The medic asked as she blushed. Despite the seriousness of the situation, she loved the feel of her lover's arms around her. A small smile graced her lips as she relaxed into his embrace. Giving you a ride, you don't mind too much, do you? The Uchiha smirked as he saw the look on her face. It was the same look she had the first time he had confessed his love for her and had held her for the first time. Their eyes met and locked onto one another until a noise was heard behind them, breaking the spell. Ahem. Ayame cleared her throat as she spied the two totally engrossed with one another. She held her small son on her hip and did everything in her power to keep from ripping into them. Lord Uchiha, why are you holding Lady Namikaze in such a familiar manner? Uh, I'm just helping Sakura back home after she had her baby. Her worthless husband seems to have disappeared, so I had to pick up the slack. He forced a smile hoping that Uruka's wife would pick up on the playfulness in his voice. Her glare told him otherwise. Ayame, have you seen Naruto? It's been days since I saw him last, and I'm worried about him. Sakura pleaded as she watched the older girl's face set hard. Sakura could see the barely controlled rage just below the surface. Oh god, she knows. Lady Namikaze, I haven't seen Naruto, Lord Namikaze, around here since just before you had your baby. Ayame replied through clenched teeth as she turned on her heel and began to walk away. What she had told Sakura was the truth. She hadn't seen Naruto on the streets, but she had seen him laying in his hospital bed when she and Uruka had gone to visit earlier in the day. Uruka and Ayame held each other and poured their grief out as Tsunade informed them of his condition. Hey, Ayame, what's your problem? Sasuke called out, clearly irritated at her attitude. Ayame turned back around, her eyes glistening with unshed tears as she snarled at the younger couple. My father always told me that if I can't say anything good to someone, then to not say anything at all. Thus, Uchiha, I have nothing to say to either of you. With that last remark and a rather rude gesture, Ayame stormed away, leaving behind a startled and confused couple. What the hell was that about? You don't think? Sasuke asked as he looked at the woman in his arms. Sakura nodded her head sadly. She knows, Sakura confirmed softly, bringing a scowl to her lover's face. A small growl escaped his throat as he began to carry Sakura to her home. What the hell did Naruto do? Run around town and tell everyone what happened? The snake summoner asked as he began to look around, noticing that other people on the street were either turning away and ignoring them, or sending them withering glares. Sasuke felt a shiver run down his spine as he began to speed toward the Namikaze estate. Sakura looked around fearfully, the sight of all the hateful gazes making her want to run and hide. Is this how Naruto felt when he was growing up? She mused as Sasuke began to wonder the same thing. It was bad when he first came home, 
but now it felt a hundred times worse, and he really couldn't understand why. After five minutes or so of roof hopping, they finally arrived at the Namikaze estate. The sight that greeted them was shocking, to say the least. Hold, a dragon masked Anbu ordered, holding out his hand as Sasuke landed before the front door of the large house. After setting Sakura down, he turned to confront the Anbu. What's going on, Neji? Sakura asked as she followed her lover to the door, noticing a large seal had been placed on it. Glancing around, she noticed the same seals on all the windows as well. What she failed to notice was the dark red stains on the door, the front steps, and the sidewalk. I need to get inside, clean up, and look for Naruto. If you'll excuse me, the masked Hayuga refused to move. I'm sorry, Neji replied, though his tone clearly showed that he wasn't, however, this home has been sealed upon orders from the Hokage. It shall remain so until its rightful owner returns. What? Sakura barked as she glared daggers at the Anbu, who refused to remove his mask despite the fact that they knew exactly who he was. Sasuke took a step forward and slapped Neji's hand out of the way, then suddenly backed up as Neji's Wakazashi instantly appeared against Sasuke's throat. Are you attacking a fellow Leaf Shinobi while in the commission of his duties? You know the penalties for that, don't you, Uchiha? Neji sneered as he activated his Byakugan the very instant Sasuke activated his Sharingan. Unfortunately for Sasuke, he was still at a disadvantage, seeing how a razor-sharp blade was poised to end his life. Sasuke finally realized the danger he was in and deactivated his blood limit. No, the Uchiha replied calmly, past the lump in his throat, I'm merely trying to help the lady Namikaze into her house. She is tired and wishes to speak to her husband. Sakura quickly nodded her head, agreeing with Sasuke. The dragon turned his head toward her, his mask hiding the smirk on his face. Lord Namikaze is not in at the moment, thus the reason the house is sealed. Neji answered, delighting in the look of confusion on the other two's faces. Neji, this is my house, too, Sakura said as she made to move past the two men, only to receive a nasty shock from the seal. What the hell? Like I said, the house has been sealed until Lord Namikaze returns. Neji smiled under his mask. Sakura was beginning to get really angry, which amused Neji even more. It's okay, Sakura, we'll merely go to the Hokage and get her to release the seal. You are the lady of the house, after all, Sasuke replied, causing the Anbu to grin viciously under the mask. Reaching into his vest, Neji produced two scrolls and held them out towards Sakura. The Hokage thought you may wish to speak to her, so she supplied these to give to you as well as a message. Neji spoke formally to the pink-haired medic. Sakura's eye twitched somewhat at Neji's tone. The Hokage stated, and I quote, Tell Uchiha and Haruno that I am busy and that I don't have time to put up with their petty little concerns. It is all explained in the scrolls. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a home to guard. Haruno? Sakura thought as she broke the seal on the first scroll and read it her skin turning deathly white as the words forced their way into her startled brain. What? You have got to be kidding, Neji. This can't be real, there are certain procedures that have to be followed, laws that have to be obeyed. What's wrong, Sakura? Sasuke asked, worried about the condition of his lover. A stray tear slid down Sakura's cheek as she handed the scroll over to Sasuke, who promptly read it and dropped it to the ground. Divorce? When? How? Why? He sputtered, his eyes locking onto the Hyuga once more. Seriously? You two didn't see this one coming, after what you did to him? Neji responded incredulously, shaking his head. By the way, Miss Haruno, all laws and procedures were followed. The evidence was so overwhelming that the Hokage followed Lord Namikaze's wishes and expedited the proceedings. You are shinobi, after all, not civilians. The Hokage has final say over these matters, not civilian courts. What? Did Naruto go crying to the Hokage about how we wronged him? Did he beg her to throw Sakura and our baby out on the streets? I knew he was hurt, I just didn't think that jackass would, you are K. Sasuke raged until he felt Neji's sword pressed once more to his throat. Do not speak ill of Lord Namikaze in my presence ever again, traitor. I, and most people in Konoha, including you too, owe their lives to him. He has saved this village more times than most of us want to even think about. We owe him a little respect. The Hyuga growled under his mask, letting off no small amount of killer intent. 
Neji, we're talking about Naruto here. You know, our knuckle-headed friend? The ramen-eating fool? My husband? Sakura responded quietly, trying to calm the Hayuga. I really need to talk to him. I gotta make him see reason. I have no place to live now. What are me and the baby going to do now? He is no longer your husband, Haruno. You lost that right when you first spread you legs for the scumbag here. Neji spat, his comments causing red to creep up Sasuke's neck. Despite his anger, there was nothing he could do with a razor-sharp sword pressed to his throat. If you will open the other scroll, it may answer some of your questions. Okay, she responded quietly as her eyes flickered over to her lover. Breaking the seal, she read silently for several moments before tears began to openly flow. Sniffling and wiping her eyes, she turned back to Sasuke. It's from Naruto. He, he says he's sorry for wasting my time over the past five years. He says he should have known that I could have never really loved someone like him, and that he should have never stood in our way. He says he divorced me as quickly as he could so that the three of us could be a family. It says he sent all my stuff over to your compound before he left. He hopes that we'll be happy to, together and that he hopes for the best. Oh God, after what we've just done to him, and he still worries about us. Sasuke, with that, she broke down as great sobs escaped her lips. Neji removed his sword, allowing the Uchiha to rush over and comfort his lady, wrapping his arms around her and supporting her the best he could. I, I've got nothing now. Nowhere to live. My husband has forced me out. She bawled as Sasuke held her close and rubbed her back soothingly. It's alright, Sakura, Sasuke replied as he continued to console her. Naruto said he sent your stuff over to my place, you can stay there with me. It's not like we hadn't already planned on that anyway, he smirked and wiggled his eyebrows. Sakura had the good grace to blush at the look on his face. We knew you would have to leave him eventually. Yeah, eventually, but not this soon. This has been my home for five years. I, I was hoping that we could have broken this to him slowly, not like what happened. She sniffled, looking into Sasuke's black eyes. Come on, let's go home, he said as he picked her up once more and turned toward the Anbu. This isn't over yet, Neji. Sasuke carried his lover away from the Namikaze estate and began to roofhop toward the other side of town. Neji watched them go, his eyes narrowed behind his mask. Oh, you have no idea, Uchiha. You have no idea. Ino was once more sitting by Naruto's bedside, her head resting next to his as she whispered softly, hoping that he could hear everything she was saying. She talked about how things were going around town, how their friends had come to visit him, how much they all missed him, and especially about how Uruka and his family had come and visited earlier in the day. Naruto remained motionless the entire time. His mind still shut down. The only clue that he had lived through his attempt was the steady rise and fall of his chest. We all really miss you, silly, she sighed as she reached out and placed a hand on his chest, reassuring herself that he was indeed still alive. Naruto made no sign that showed he even knew that she was there. Ino laid her head back down and snuggled up next to his, getting as close to his ear as she could. I really miss you, I need to hear your loud voice again. I need you to wake up and drag my ass down to the ramen stand and force another bowl of that stuff down my throat. I'll let you in on a secret. I really do like ramen, I just bitch about it to get a rise out of you. She giggled softly before her face became serious again. You'll never guess what happened. Shikamaru finally got off his lazy ass and asked Tamari to marry him, and she, yes. I guess seeing everything that happened to you really opened his eyes. He even volunteered to resign from Konoha and move to Suna for her. She told him that wasn't necessary, so she sent a message to Gara to let him know what was going on. He should be here in a day or so to work out the details, and to see you, of course. Shika thought about it later, and realized that this could be a good thing for Konoha. A political marriage will strengthen the treaty between our two villages, even if the marriage didn't start out as one. Believe it or not, but Tamari thought that was a great idea. Man, those two are so romantic, I just can't stand it. She smirked, her last statement laced with copious amounts of sarcasm. She half expected to him laugh out loud and agree with her, but the only answer she got was the steady beeping of his monitors. She sighed again as the great chasm of despair began to open wide for her once more. Tears began to form in her eyes, but before they could fall, a muffled sound came from behind the door to his room. Ino raised her head as she watched Shizune walk in with a loud, squirming bundle in her arms, 
a look of desperation on her face. Shizun, is that? Ino asked as the medic quickly crossed the room and stood next to Naruto's bed. Ino noticed that the sounds got quieter the closer Shizun was to the stricken blonde on the bed. Yeah, it's Sakura's baby, Shizun replied as she bent down and placed the small, thrashing baby next to Naruto in the bed. Much to her relief, he quickly got quiet and still as he snuggled up to the toad sage. Ino and Shizun both sighed as they watched the two on the bed, baby and wannabe father both. That's the quietest he's been since he was born. I was getting really worried there about his health, but he seems to relax when he's near Naruto. I wonder why? He would have made such a good daddy, Ino replied sadly as her imagination began to run away with her, thoughts of Naruto and lots of children outside, romping around and playing with each other. She watched Naruto smile as all the kids dog piled him before a call from the front door of his house drew his attention to. Ino, are you okay? Shizun asked as she watched the young blonde woman space out before her. Ino quickly shook her head and looked at the concerned medic. Yeah, just tired and stressed out, that's all. The mind walker responded as she reached out and stroked the baby's face, then Naruto's. If she didn't know any better, she could have sworn she had seen a small smile try to force its way onto Naruto's face. How long are you going to leave the baby here? Sakura is gonna be pissed when she comes in and finds them like this. Don't worry about that. She and Sasuke left the hospital for a while to head back to the estate. Knowing those two, it'll be a while before they return. I'll leave the baby here until they get back because he really needs some rest. The staff will tell me when they get back. Shizun gave Ino a wink as she handed the young blonde a bottle. If he wakes up before I get back, he's going to be hungry. Do you think that you can? Sure. Ino smiled as she took the bottle and set in next to her on the table. Shizun smiled at her as she walked back out the door, leaving the three alone in the room. You will make a great daddy one day, Naruto. You'll just need to find the right woman, Ino said as she stroked the whisker marks on his cheeks, tears sliding down her face. Sasuke was livid. It was bad enough that he and Sakura had discovered the words, bastard, and traitor, painted on the outside walls of the Uchiha compound in big, red letters, but it was what he found inside that had really pissed him off. What exactly do you mean? Reparations, the Uchiha seethed as he stood at attention before the Hokage. Tsunade narrowed her eyes as she leaned forward and rested her chin on her knuckles, her gaze withering. And what does that have to do with what I found at my home? Simple, Uchiha, Tsunade said with a predatory smile that would make a shark piss itself in fear, as you may remember, imprisonment wasn't the only part of your punishment for betraying the village. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was also locked into the rank of Genin until such time as I proved my loyalty to Konoha. But what does that have to do with strangers moving into the Uchiha compound? He bellowed, only to have Tsunade stand up from behind her desk in the blink of an eye and backhand him, causing him to stumble. Blood poured from his split lip. Watch how you speak to me, Junin. I am still Hokage of this village and you will speak to me with respect. Understand me? She snarled, causing Sasuke to nod his understanding. He was very thankful that she hadn't used her famous chakra-infused punch. Good, she replied as she took her seat once more. Now, it was stated in your sentencing that any additional punishments can be added as warranted by the Hokage. After reviewing your case and the expenses incurred in your retrieval over the years, it has been determined that a financial award to the village was appropriate. But, dot but that's my home. It's the Uchiha ancestral grounds. You, dot you just can't take most of it away from me and my clan just to punish me. Sasuke pleaded with the Hokage, but to no avail. Your clan? Right now, Uchiha, your clan consists of yourself and your illegitimate child. That hardly warrants the amount of land the Uchiha compound takes in the village. Do you realize that your clan compound comprises approximately one-fifth the total area of the village? That's an awful lot of land for just two people. Tsunade smirked as she saw the desperation in the Uchiha's eyes. I need room for my clan to grow, Lady Hokage. I will rebuild my clan, and we'll need space to live, Sasuke growled, coming dangerously close to another slap. Understood. At that time, you can buy back some of the land from the village. Tsunade replied as she set several sheets of paper before the angry Junin. As you can see, you still have more than enough land in which to raise a family. We didn't take your house, nor any of the immediate area. 
We didn't take any of your personal or family fortune, though we were well within our rights to do so. You do have a child to raise, and I am not so cruel as force a child into poverty. No, but you will force him to grow up in cramped conditions, he shot back, earning a death glare from Tsunade. Cramped conditions? You have a huge house and over 100 acres to raise your children on. What do you know of cramped conditions? You weren't forced to live in a small, two-room apartment from the age of four and beyond. No real place to call your own, no family to support you, no one really giving a rat's ass whether you lived or died. Tsunade yelled, causing the young man before her to cringe, waiting for the promised slap. Suddenly, understanding lit up his world. This is about Naruto, isn't it? What did he do, beg you to punish me when he got you to expedite his divorce from Sakura? Did he demand that you take everything from me like he thinks I've done to him? Like he's done to Sakura? Do you know he threw her out on the street without a penny to her name? God, I never thought he would be that petty. Sasuke saw a brief flicker of grief flash across her eyes before her face became a stone-cold mask once again. First off, I haven't spoken to Lord Namikaze since before he had a clone bring me the divorce petition. Second, he may have taken sole custody of the Namikaze estate, but he has left Sakura far from penniless. He signed over an eighth of his family fortune to his ex-wife, which is approximately what your entire family fortune is worth. He also signed over a nice-sized house to her, which happens to be close to your own home. Had you read the divorce decree, you may have noticed that. Third, Lord Namikaze has absolutely no knowledge of what punishments have been levied upon you. He specifically asked me not to punish you for your transgressions, but as Hokage, I have a village to look out for. The land and buildings confiscated from you are being assigned, rent-free, to the refugees we have taken in from other villages. Also, several of the buildings are being converted into orphanages for those children who have lost their parents. The old orphanage was a disgrace and entirely overfilled. You wouldn't want to allow those children to suffer, would you? Seeing how you're a father, now yourself? Tsunade asked in her sweetest voice. Uh, no ma'am, he replied, deflated and defeated. This had truly had been one hell of a day. Good, now, take the weekend off, then report to me first thing Monday morning. Until such time as I deem you and your judgment sound, you are restricted to D-rank missions. You will meet your new Genin team here at 8 a.m. sharp, do you understand? The snake summoner bristled at the thought of having to perform such low-rank missions, but he realized that Tsunade was being extremely lenient with him. Things could have gone much worse. He merely nodded his understanding. Excellent, you're dismissed. Um, Lady Hokage? He asked as he began to step out of her office. Tsunade glanced up from her paperwork, looking annoyed. If you see Naruto, could you tell him that we're worried about him? We haven't seen him since the baby was born, and we all really need to sit down and talk about what happened. Tsunade's eyes widened in shock. Oh god, they don't know, she screamed in her mind. Her child was laying in a hospital bed, dead to the world, and the two that helped cause it knew noting about it. If get a chance to tell him, Mr. Uchiha, I'll let him know. My brother, whispered Gara as the red-headed case cage laid his hand upon Naruto's head. His sister stood by his side, as did her fiancé as all three gazed sadly upon the countenance of the stricken toad sage. What have they done to you? Ino couldn't help but to stare, after all, it wasn't every day that you saw two cages standing in the same room with each other, let alone to visit one lone shinobi. Naruto, however, was no mere shinobi, he was precious to Gara and Tsunade both. He had single-handedly opened and healed both of their hearts, the same hearts which now hurt beyond belief. How, how long has he been like this? Gara asked, swallowing past the unfamiliar lump in his throat. This was the first time in a very, very long time that he had felt true sorrow, and it was a feeling that he hated. It's been ten days, Tsunade replied as she began to study his chart once more. Gara's head snapped around as he began to stare at the blonde cage. What? That, that cannot be correct. The Kayubi should have completely healed him by this time, Gara responded as sand began to leak from the gourd on his back. Tamari and Shikamaru both took a step back, wide-eyed. Why was I not informed sooner? I sent a message to you as soon as I found out, Gara, his sister answered, taking hold of her brother's trembling hand, calming him slightly. I should have taken him to Suna, Gara seethed, his eyes widening in anger. I should have never left him in this ungrateful village. Look what they have done to him. 
It wasn't the village, Lord Case Cage, Eno spoke as she sat up next to the bed. She paled as Gara's eyes locked onto her, his sand swirling menacingly behind him. He, he did this to himself, but he was driven to it. By whom? The icy question came as the case cage crossed his arms. Eno visibly gulped before she answered. By his wife, and Sasuke. Then they are dead, commanded Gara as he spun on his heel to go track down the guilty couple. However, before he could take even one step, the platinum blonde Kunoichi called back out to him. You can't. Eno yelled and then cringed when Gara turned back to her, killer intent filling the small room. Naruto wouldn't want that. He wanted them to be happy, that's why he divorced Sakura, so she and Sasuke could be together. They have a baby for God's sakes. Naruto wouldn't want it to become an orphan because of him. Gara's eyes softened as he deflated, collapsing back into a chair of sand that had formed behind him. His eyes glanced back over to his comatose friend. Your heart really is too big sometimes, brother, Gara said before turning toward Tsunade. So, the baby isn't his? Tsunade shook her head sadly. I'm afraid not, she replied as she set Naruto's chart back down. I think that in itself is the main reason he, did what he did. As for the Kayubi, we can sense its chakra coming from the knucklehead, but he still is healing a lot slower than he normally would. He's still healing faster than, normal, people, but much too slowly for himself. Has anyone tried to go, inside? Gara asked, pointing to his head. His mind was desperately searching for an answer to his friend's dilemma. Yes, we sent Miss Yamanaka's father inside a few days after it happened, but he met too much resistance and chaos. We're going to have him try again tomorrow, to see if he can finally get through, Tsunade answered as she watched her two fellow blondes. Ino's reaction still worried her. Gara noticed this. Tamari, Shikamaru, come. We have much to discuss. Lady Tsunade, would you join us, please? Gara asked as he cast his eyes meaningfully toward the blonde couple. Tsunade nodded her head slightly as she followed them out the door. What did you wish to discuss, Lord Case Cage? Tsunade asked as the four walked toward the hospital exit. Gara groaned as he shook his head. Just, Gara, please. We have known each other for a number of years now, Lady Hokage, and we both care about the same idiot. I think you can call me by my name. Tsunade softly smiled and then chuckled a bit. Understood, she replied as they stopped before the doors that led out to the greater world beyond. Tsunade turned and looked the young case cage squarely in the eye. She truly cares for him, does she not? Gara asked quietly. His question stopped her short. I believe so. Ino is the one who searched for him and discovered him at his house, covered in his own blood. She refused to leave his side when he came out of surgery, only doing so when her friends forced her to do so. She's gotten very little sleep and talks to him constantly, doing everything she can to bring him out of his coma. Gara frowned. I am worried, he stated plainly, his eyes clouded. About what? Tamari asked carefully as she watched Tsunade slowly nod her head. The sand kunoichi wasn't entirely sure where this was going. I do not wish for him to be hurt again, sister, the young redhead replied, his thoughts jumbled. I wish to bring him to Suna. Perhaps a political marriage to you would be the best solution. Tamari and Shikamaru both went pale as they grasped each other's hands. Turning back to Tsunade, he continued his rant. She is strong, loyal and caring. Tamari would never allow him to be harmed in any way ever again. No, Naruto would never go for that. Tsunade answered, her eyes spying the panicking young couple behind him. First off, Naruto would never marry for anything other than love, and second, he would never force anyone into a marriage they didn't want. Yes, I guess you are correct. Gara agreed sadly, causing his sister and her fiancé to sigh in relief. Besides, it seems that my sister has fallen hard for the lazy Nara behind me. We still have much to talk about when we get back to the embassy. Don't we, Nara? Gara grinned when he said that last part, know full well that Shikamaru was about to crap his pants. Tsunade smiled as she watched the three youngsters walk down the road before she turned to trudge back to her office. The next day, Ino Yamanaka stood behind the counter of her parents' flower shop, sighing heavily as she stared out the front window to the world bustling out beyond. Today was the day that her father was going to try to dive into Naruto's mind again, so she agreed to watch the shop for him until he returned, hopefully with good news. Ino, dear, are you alright? Her mother asked as she came up behind her daughter and gave her a hug. 
Ino sighed as she turned in her mother's arms and hugged her back. Yeah, mom, I guess, she replied as she broke the embrace and sat down on the stool she kept behind the counter. Her mother was worried about her, but what mother doesn't worry about her child? Ino had dark circles around her eyes, her skin was pale, her hair hung limp, and she was dressed in an old sweatsuit that sported a picture of a laughing chibi fox on the front of the shirt. Naruto had given the outfit to her when he and Sakura started taking care of her when her boyfriend had broken up with her. Ino remembered Naruto laughing his ass off at the look on her face when she first saw the clothes. The suit was mostly purple, and she could handle the little fox, but the orange tiger stripes on the pants legs were too much. Come on, Tigger, we gotta go. The toad sage laughed as he dragged the protesting girl out the door into his favorite training field, his wife behind Ino, pushing her along. She felt so sad that she had never thanked him for his kindness. Naruto was the strangest motivator she had ever met. That first day, during their warm-up run, she had griped rather loudly about how she didn't think they were going to run, so she had neglected to put on a bra. Ino should have known something was up when she saw the smirk appear on his face. Sakura wisely took that moment to stop and hide in a tree. Hey, what's wrong? I thought Tiggers liked to bounce. He called out and laughed like a maniac when he saw her eyes widen and her face grow red. To this day, the people of Konoha still talk of the laughing orange streak and the growling purple blur that had appeared on the streets that day. When Naruto finally stopped, Ino took her frustrations out on him, but he just giggled and said it was worth it. You're really worried about him, aren't you? Her mother asked as she patted her daughter's hand. Ino sighed as she looked back out the shop window. He'll pull through, you know? He's had worse injuries than this. Yeah, Ino muttered, wondering when her father would come back with some news. She was itching to get back the hospital to check up on her friend, and to fill him in on the latest gossip she had caught up on. Ino had taken Tsunade's words about talking to folks in comas to heart. Ino's mother began to rub her daughter's back when the front door opened, revealing Inochi Yamanaka. The elder blonde stood there, his eyes wide and his skin pale, as he began to scan the shop. Honey, what's wrong? His wife called out, drawing his attention to the two women in his life. In the blink of an eye, he vaulted over the counter and wrapped them both up in huge hug. Eno, 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 he whispered as he sprinkled light kisses over the top of her head. Oh God, my little princess. Daddy, what's wrong? Did something happen to Naruto? You, you're beginning to scare me. Eno begged as she felt her father violently shaking. Her heart dropped fearing for her friend. Come, let's go to the kitchen and get some tea, Mrs. Yamanaka replied as she began to drag the other two out of the shop. After you calm down, you can tell us what happened. Hey, sensei, just what the hell are we doing here? Asked a dark-haired genin, a look of annoyance set on his young face. Sasuke shook his head as he rubbed lotion on the insect bites that covered both of his arms. He scowled at the little loud mouth that had been the bane of his existence since 8 a.m. Monday morning. Shut your mouth, you idiot. You can't talk to the great Sasuke Uchiha that way, a little red-haired Kunoichi spat as she turned and stared at their sensei with stars in her eyes. Isn't that right, Mana? HN, replied the other Kunoichi of the team, a pale girl with pink eyes and light blue hair. She turned to the dark-haired boy with detachment in her eyes and her voice. Must you be so loud, Akira? You know how annoying Mariko is when she is scolding you. What? Mariko screamed as Akira snickered in the background. The little redhead stormed over to Mana and got into her face, standing nose to nose with the pale girl. I'll have you know, you blue-haired freak, that I'm not annoying. Yes, you are, Mariko, replied Mana quietly, never giving her fellow Kunoichi her full attention. This caused Mariko to become even more angry. Why, you little bitch? I'm gonna knock you into next, whoop. Mariko yelped as Sasuke grabbed her by the back of her collar and lifted her up and away from her teammate. She turned to glare at whomever had the nerve to prevent her from dealing out such richly deserved punishment, only to see Sasuke standing there. Hearts shot out of her eyes. Alright team, calm down. We still have a mission to perform, the Uchiha announced before trying to stifle a yawn. As he looked over his genin team, Sasuke began to experience a rather disturbing sense of deja vu. Ah crap, it's team 7 all over again, he thought. Yes, sensei. All three chirped at once before they fell into a line before him. 
Sasuke just rolled his eyes and wondered if he'd get into trouble for using his Mangekio Sharingan on them. Okay, here's the mission. Farmer Kubo has hired us to rid his herb garden of gophers and moles. He grows very rare and very expensive medicinal herbs that the Hokage and the other medics in the hospital use to create life-saving medicines. Your job is to get rid of all the pests while doing as little damage as possible to the crop. You three think you can handle that? Yes, sensei, they barked as one before taking to the field. Sasuke sighed as he walked over to a nearby tree and sat down, closing his eyes. He yawned and stretched as he found a comfortable spot to settle, sleep slowly beginning to creep up on him. He cracked his eyes open for a moment and watched as members of his team began to argue as to the best method of achieving their mission, which soon ended up in a brawl between Akira and Mariko. Mana walked away from the tangle of limbs and began to scan the ground for the offending rodents. Sasuke rubbed the bags under his eyes as his mind drifted off to the events of the previous night. Shizune had finally cleared he and Sakura's baby to be taken home, seeing how he was beginning to calm down a little and put on a little bit of weight. He was still fussy, but they finally managed to get him to sleep so they could have a little bit of alone time. That is, until the party out in the compound started. Sakura was crying and holding her baby as Sasuke stormed out of the house to find out what was going on. As he stepped onto his front porch, he placed his foot into a huge pile of dog crap that had mysteriously appeared out of nowhere. Cursing, Sasuke hopped around on one foot until he slipped off the porch and fell right into a huge fire ant mound that had sprung up there recently. Despite the fact he was an elite junin, fire ant bites hurt like hell, causing him to jump up and run across the yard screaming like a madman. Once Sasuke had finally succeeded in brushing off all the little offending insects, he rushed out of the gates that led from his private property, only to run smack dab into an official block party, hosted by none other than the Hokage herself. Tsunade had organized it so the refugees could get out and meet their new neighbors. Several people came out and shook Sasuke's hand, thanking him for his generous donation of so much of his family lands to the village. He looked up and saw the Hokage smirking slightly and shooting him a hard glare. Sasuke gulped and told everyone that they were most welcome. After he left, many people began to wonder why Lord Uchiha smelled like dog poop. Grumbling under his breath about loud neighbors and scheming Hokages, Sasuke stormed up his sidewalk and reminded himself to avoid the doggy landmine on his porch. Just as he was getting close, he felt two sharp stings behind his knees causing him to lose control of both his lower legs and his balance. Splat! Sasuke fell face first right into a second pile of warm dog crap that had been left on his sidewalk. He raised himself to his knees, the smell of fresh excrement filling his nose and mouth as the tried to get his legs back underneath him. When that failed, he did the only thing he could. Sakura! He yelled at the top of his lungs, causing his pink-haired lover to come barreling out of the front door herself stepping into the first pile of doggy donuts as she rocketed to Sasuke's side. Ew, she said as she saw what was covering his face. Sasuke scowled as he told her what had happened and that he couldn't walk. He felt totally humiliated as Sakura charged up her monstrous strength and picked him up bridal style and began to carry him back toward the house. She stepped in the dog poop again as she carried him inside, tracking it all through the house. They were so lost in their own misery that they missed seeing four shadows leap over the wall and back toward the party. Things didn't get much better after they were back in their room. Sakura had gotten the baby asleep again as Sasuke washed the offensive mess off of his face and feet. After that, she treated the bug bites on his arms and chest as he tried to get his legs working again. Sakura discovered that the chakra points in his knees had been closed somehow, which puzzled them both for they never detected any chakra signature close enough by to shut them down. Deciding that the best way to open them was to force even more chakra into his legs, Sasuke closed his eyes and concentrated. Hard, what happened next was the stuff of legends. As Sasuke sat on the edge of his bed, forcing chakra into his legs, the points on his knees suddenly opened. This allowed all the chakra to pass directly to his feet. The great Sasuke Uchiha suddenly became the great Sasuke Pinball as, with a startled yelp of surprise, he rocketed off his bed, bounced off his ceiling, onto the bed again, then off the wall behind his headboard, flew sideways into the dresser, and finally bounced into his lover. 
Both Sasuke and Sakura crashed to the ground in a great tangle of limbs, promptly waking the baby up again. The two lovers held onto each other and cried, knowing that their night was ruined. Sensei. Hey, Sensei. Akira yelled as he kicked Sasuke's feet, forcing the snake summoner back to the waking world. Once he stretched, he glared at his student, his eyes red as the three tomos spun in each eye. What? Why are you standing here? I thought you had a mission to accomplish. Sasuke snarled, upset that his much-needed nap had been disturbed. Shocked, the young boy took a few steps back before answering. But, we're done. The young shinobi answered as he pointed to a large pile at the edge of the clearing. His eyes raised in disbelief. Sasuke walked toward the garden, thoroughly impressed with his genin. Until he reached the pile, that is. There before him was a large mound, consisting of dead gophers, moles, rats, several snakes, a handful of cats, two dogs and a sheep. The various animals all showed signs of meeting their end in several violent ways. Uh, I see the gophers and moles. Sasuke began as he picked up several of the corpses, all of which showed signs of either blade wounds, burns, or were soaked, but what about the rats? Oh, well, they were destroying the herbs too, so he got them too. Akira announced proudly, the snakes kinda got in the way, but who likes snakes anyway? Sasuke's eyebrows twitched, obviously the little snot didn't know he was a snake summoner. And the cats? The Junin asked, holding a smoldering cat up by its tail. The other cats all showed signs of death by immolation. Uh, they were chasing the rats, Akira answered as he scratched the back of his head, they, uh, kinda got in the way, too. Sasuke could feel a massive headache beginning to build, especially when he noticed that one of the bodies had on a very expensive collar with a name tag that looked familiar. Why are there two dogs here? I'm pretty sure they weren't on the pest list, Sasuke growled. Akira grinned nervously as he fidgeted before his sensei. Well, you see, you know how man is kinda quiet and stuff. Well, she kinda hates dogs, they scare her pretty bad. When Mariko used a Kaden Jutsu to kill the rats and, uh, the cats, it kinda scared a couple of the dogs that hang around here. Farmer Kubo's dogs, perhaps? Sasuke muttered. Yep, definitely a headache was coming on. I guess so, well anyway. Mana kinda freaked out when they came out of the bushes, so she threw some kanai at them. The dark-haired Jenin continued. Sasuke rolled his eyes. Right between the eyes, he sighed as Akira nodded his head furiously. Yep, good shot, huh? Sasuke just shook his head at the young boy's assessment of his teammate's skills. I guess so, the Uchiha added as he glared at the animal on the top of the pile. What about the sheep? The poor animal was soaked as well as half-cooked. One of Mariko's fireballs skipped off a rock and flew into the next field so I used a Sweden Jutsu to put it out. It kinda didn't make it, Akira added glumly. Really? You think? Sasuke rebuked rather sarcastically as Akira withered under his glare. Just why the hell are most of these animals soaked, and just where the hell are your teammates? Akira cringed as his sensei yelled at him. They, they sent me to get you. They said something about being out of the line of fire, whatever that means, Akira stammered. Sasuke looked confused for a second before his eyes widened and he turned pale. Oh, hell no. He barked as he grabbed Akira by the back of his collar and began to drag the young genin back toward the field. The sight before the Uchiha made his stomach sick. The herbal field was a complete wreck. The hedge that circled the garden had gaping holes in it, with either black branches or mud puddles showing what had happened. The field itself looked even worse. No plant survived, they were all either trampled, burned, or washed out. There wasn't a single bit of dry dirt anywhere as the huge geyser that shot out of the middle of the field continued to do its work of turning it into a swamp. Shit, Sasuke yelled as the surveyed the damage to the precious herbal garden. Mana, Mariko, get your asses out here right now. Instantly, two crestfallen kunoichi appeared before their leader. Why why yes sir? Mariko stammered as Sasuke threw Akira to the ground next to her. The young girl was so scared that her crush was angry with her. Just what the hell happened? bellowed their sensei, sending the small redhead into a torrent of tears. Well, we killed all the pests in the field, just like the mission guidelines said to. She sniffed, looking over at her fellow teammates. True, but the other half of the mission was to do as little damage as possible. Sasuke screamed, 
doing his best impression of Uruka's big head jutsu. It's all Akira's fault. He used a sweetened jutsu to flush all the animals to the surface. Mariko spat, causing Akira's face to fall. Mana, however, noticed this and had to interject. He only did that after you complained about how long it was going to take, the blue-haired Kunoichi said, in a matter-of-fact way. You wished to spend more time with Sensei, if I remember correctly. Her fellow Kunoichi shot her an evil look. That was the plan, after all, Akira added in his defense. I would flush them out and you and Mana would dispose of them. Mariko was about to punch the poor lad when Sasuke intervened. Enough. He bellowed again, causing all three to shrink back. Akira, care to tell me about the geyser out there? Uh, well, I needed a lot of water to put out the fires in the hedge, and the cats, and the sheep. So I used a whole lot of chakra and pulled as much water into the jutsu as I could. I just, didn't know that there was an underground water pipe that ran under the field. Sorry, he answered, shamefaced. Sasuke merely sighed. Well, they did try really hard, and they did use teamwork, sort of. Sasuke thought as he watched his team's misery. Okay, first thing we have to do is fix this damage. Akira, go find the cutoff for the water and then use a Sweden Jutsu to remove all the water from the garden. Mariko, I'm going to show you how to use a Kaden to dry the soil, and we'll use a Kanai to plug the hole in the pipe. I'll weld it with a Raiden Jutsu of mine. Mana, you gather up as many of the plants as you can, maybe we can salvage something. After that, we'll go talk to Farmer Kubo and then report our failure to the Hokage. Yes, Sensei, they muttered dejectedly as they left to carry out their assigned tasks. Hours later, everything was repaired as they reported to the farmer. Don't expect me to pay your Hokage for this job, Kubo stated as he crossed his arms and glared at the four shinobi. We're just lucky that my crop was so close to being harvested. However, between being harvested early and all the damage, I've lost nearly half the crop. Not to mention my dogs and sheep. I expect to be compensated for my losses. Yes sir, we understand. Sasuke apologized as he and his team turned to leave the fuming farmer. Huh, what do you expect from an Uchiha? Kubo growled as he slammed his front door. Sasuke seethed, turning red as he marched his team toward the Hokage Tower. He understood that between he, his father's and Itachi's actions, nobody trusted the Uchiha anymore. But to hear what used to be such a respected name spoken with such disdain really galled him. Damn, karma's a bitch, he mused as he watched his team amble down the road, trading the occasional blows, and she's in heat. Daddy, could you please tell me what's wrong? I've never seen you like this before. Is Naruto alright? Ino begged as she and her mother did everything they could to calm down a rather distraught Inochi. The eldest blonde merely sat at the table, his eyes wide and his hands trembling as he took sip after sip of the chamomile tea that his wife had made for him. It had always worked before to calm him down after rough missions, so she hoped that it would do the trick once more. Ino, sweetie, perhaps it would be better if you just went upstairs and let your father relax a bit, her mother began hoping to spare Eno from any troubling news that her father must have to relay. Eno began to protest when Inochi reached out and placed a shaky hand on her arm. No, no, that's all right, dear. I want our daughter to be here, it's reassuring to have her around, Inochi said as he looked deep within his wife's eyes. She has every right to hear what I have discovered, after all, Naruto is rather close to her. He noticed that the two of them were looking at him with somewhat confused expressions on their faces. What do you mean by that? His wife asked, still worried. She had only seen Inochi come home in that state once before, and it had frightened her terribly. Ino sighed in exasperation, this sitting around when something might be badly wrong with her friend was driving her nuts. Daddy, please, Ino pleaded, desperation in her eyes as she grabbed onto her father's hand causing him to turn his full attention to her. What's wrong with Naruto? Inochi closed his eyes and sighed as he attempted to gather his thoughts. I'm not sure exactly what is wrong with Naruto, princess. He began as Ino's heart sank to her feet. A tear beginning its long trek down her smooth face to the waiting tabletop below. I can tell you this, it has to be something truly horrible if he can survive both the fox and the memories of what has happened to him since he was born. His wife and daughter just looked at him as he said this, the gears had yet to start turning within their minds. I understand about the Kayubi, but what about his memories, his wife asked. Ino sighed, 
Knowing that though her mother was just as big a gossip Eno herself, she never truly saw the dark side of their village. Eno's eyes followed her father as he abruptly stood up and walked over to the kitchen window, his eyes peering into the deep, dark past. There are times as a mind walker, Eno, when we dive into a mind that has been so scarred that we don't come back the same way we were when we started, her father said in a haunted voice, as a lone tear slid down his cheek. Eno was utterly shocked, for she had never seen her father show such raw emotion before. Much like Naruto, he almost always had a smile on his lips and a laugh in his heart, despite the fact he was a top-flight shinobi who was feared by the enemy almost as much as Konoha's head interrogator, Abuki. There were many things I knew, or thought I knew, about the activities of this village and its inhabitants. Now, after all that I've seen, there are people in this town that I'll never be able to look in the eye again. They'll be lucky that I don't put a kanai in their hearts, or scramble their minds like broken eggs. What happened? His wife asked, still confused as to what her husband saw. Why did you look into Naruto's memories? Was it what you had to do to discover what was wrong with him? Ino wondered this as well, knowing full well that her father would have never violated Naruto's mind like that without a good reason. He was supposed to go in and see to Naruto's immediate problems, not to delve into his past. I had no choice, honey, Inochi replied as he turned back toward his family, when I entered Naruto's mind, it had finally calmed down to the point that I started to look for Naruto's self-image, so I could determine why he had not healed and why his mind was still shut down. I met something, monstrous. Kayubi no Kitsun, Ino whispered, her mind unable to come up with a horrid enough image to be able to picture the demon fox. Inochi slowly nodded his head in agreement. Indeed, as soon as I entered Naruto's mind, I was confronted by the fox. The sheer power of his anger forced me through the doorway down the path of memories. Before I could turn from the starlight path, the door was slammed behind me. I experienced everything that Naruto went through his entire life. I saw it all, I felt, everything. A shudder ran through Inochi's body as his eyes seemed to go blank. After a second or two, he shook himself and walked back to the table and took a seat, seemingly oblivious to the dropped jaws of his family. You felt it, all? Ino asked quietly, that was proof of the fox's power, being able to force the actual feelings upon a mind walker. Normally, a mind walker could watch the memories, and maybe be able to get a pale glimmer of the feelings involved, but it took a truly talented person to be able to go so deep as to actually merge with the memories and emotions. Either that, or an incredible power to force it upon them. Inochi nodded sadly, then locked eyes with his daughter. Everything, he agreed his eyes never wavering from his daughter. Ino went pale when she finally realized what her father was talking about. He knew everything that Naruto knew about her, and what had happened in the past. She watched as sadness filled his eyes. I'm so sorry, Ino, I never knew that your ex-boyfriend had treated so badly, had put you through so much. I never knew he pushed you to. Inochi erupted in tears as Ino jumped up and wrapped her father up in a hug. It's okay, daddy, it's okay she whispered as her tears matched his own. Her heart sank as she felt her father break down, for there were certain things that Naruto, and Naruto alone, knew about her. She never wanted her family or friends to know about them whatsoever, and Naruto had agreed with her wishes back then. She gasped as her father spun in his seat and wrapped his powerful arms around her. I'm alright now, I promise. Okay, Ino, what are you two talking about? Her mother asked, her eyebrows lifted in obvious confusion. Ino opened her mouth to answer when Inochi violently shook his head. It's ninja business, dear, he muttered as he wiped his eyes on his shirt sleeve. Ino quickly nodded her head in agreement. If what her father had learned had such a profound effect on him, then her mother really didn't need to know. However, if anything like that happens again, I expect you to let me know. Alright, princess? Yes, daddy, Ino responded as she absent-mindedly rubbed her left wrist as the three of them sat back down at the table and continued to have tea, all the while enjoying each other's company and the warmth only a close family can provide. A week had passed since the disastrous mission at Farmer Kubo's place, and things had not gotten much better. The Hokage had informed them that not only did Sasuke have to pay Kubo back for all the crops that had been ruined, due to the fact he had failed to supervise his team but all four of them had to spend part of their downtime helping Kubo and several other farmers getting their fields ready for planting their crops to be harvested in the fall. 
None of them were relishing that task. Sasuke rolled his eyes as he watched his team, in the middle of a knockdown, drag out fight that was supposed to be a sparring match. It had started out innocently enough, until Akira cut loose with a Sweden jutsu that got Mariko's hair wet. Normally, that would only result in a knock on the head by the irate redhead, but on this day she had chosen to spend the better part of the morning styling it just right to catch the eye of her sensei. Needless to say, she was extremely pissed at the moment, and promptly tackled Akira and proceeded to pound his head into the dirt. Mana stepped forward break them up, only to be grabbed by Mariko and dragged into the furball. Uh, Sasuke, don't you think you should break them up? Sakura asked as she walked onto Team 13's training grounds, a rather fussy baby in her arms. Sasuke sighed as he watched his lover approach with their child, getting up slowly and then wrapping her up in his arms as he reached down and stroked the baby's face. This only caused the baby to start to cry, which did nothing for Sasuke's nerves. Nah, I guess we should just let them handle it themselves, that's what Kakashi sensei would have done, he mumbled as he moved up behind her and began to nibble on her neck. Sakura's face turned red and shivers ran down her body, welcoming the tingles that ran straight down to her toes and right back up again as Sasuke continued his assault on her neck. Why am I not surprised at that attitude, Uchiha? Uruka stated as he walked out from behind a nearby tree, his son resting in his arms as he stared first at the two lovers and their child and then back toward the moving tangle of limbs that continued to crawl across the ground. Son, cover your ears for a sec, okay? K, the little boy said quietly as he reached up and covered his small ears as he watched his father perform his famous big head jutsu. Sasuke and Sakura both blanched and tried to cover their ears, as well as the babies. That is enough. Uruka bellowed, which caused three little genin instantly stop their brawl and bolt upright, standing at perfect attention. Sasuke and Sakura both had to fight the reaction as well. Yes, Uruka sensei. All three chirped in perfect unison, each of them trembling at the memories attached to that voice. Uruka merely shook his head, trying to forget the hell those three had given him at the academy. He was more than happy to send them off as genin several weeks ago. That's better, Uruka said as he stood before the three and surveyed the damage. I hope you haven't been too much trouble for your sensei. Now, why don't you three head on off while I talk to Mr. Uchiha for a bit? Shouldn't that be, Lord Uchiha, Uruka sensei? Sakura asked, somewhat perturbed at their former teacher's lack of respect toward her lover. Uruka shot her an evil glare that frightened her and Sasuke both. Whatever, he waved off as they watched Team 13 take off toward town with little Mariko turning back occasionally to shoot Sakura a withering glance. She didn't like how close she was to her precious sensei, and was extremely jealous of the pink-haired Junin. Uruka, just what did you mean by that comment about my attitude? Sasuke asked, refusing to add, sensei, to Uruka's name. He was a little upset at how his genin responded to his former teacher and the obvious lack of respect Uruka had for him. Uruka merely smirked at the Uchiha's question just exactly what I said, I'm not surprised about your attitude. You stood there and let your team fight one another without lifting a finger. To top it off, you were kissing on Sakura in front of them. If I remember correctly, it was your affair with her that lead to the breakup of her marriage, just what the hell kind of an example is that to show young Jenin? Uruka fumed as he stared the young couple down. Sasuke, not used to getting dressed down, especially in front of his lover quickly grew quite angry and stepped forward and confronted Uruka. My personal life is none of your concern, Chunin. I would ask you to kindly keep your fucking nose out my business, what the fuck? Sasuke yelled as his face was forcefully slammed into a nearby tree. He could feel Uruka's hot breath in his ear as pain shot up his right arm, which had been forced back and locked into his lower back. Wrong, you son of a bitch. Uruka hissed quietly into his ear so as not to be heard by anyone other than Sasuke. Your personal life concerns me greatly as of an hour ago. First off, don't ever swear near my son again. Second, don't ever throw my rank in my face again. I stepped down as both a Junin and an Anbu captain to help teach future shinobi how to survive. Trust me, you don't want to see my dolphin mask coming after you. Sasuke almost lost control of his bodily functions upon hearing about the dolphin. Itachi had always spoke reverently of the dolphin as his mentor in the Anbu Corps, and how it was the dolphin who stepped down and turned the title of Anbu captain over to him. 
The only regret Itachi had ever confided in him before the massacre was the fact he was never able to defeat the dolphin in combat. Now, Uruka announced as he spun Sasuke back around and threw him to the ground next to where Sakura stood. Said pink-haired medic stood in shocked wonder at the transformation that had overtaken her former teacher. What surprised her even more was the fact she never saw Uruka move, nor had she seen him sit his son on the ground about 20 feet away from them. The little boy sat there, happily playing with the little wooden kanai Naruto had gotten him for his last birthday. As I was about to say before this, unpleasantness, was that the lady Hokage has sent me to deliver this to you. OWW. Sasuke barked as a scroll bounced off his forehead before falling into his lap. As he opened it, Uruka smiled evilly as he made his announcement. He was enjoying the parade of emotions that was playing over the young Uchiha's face. As of this moment, Uchiha, due to your actions and your lack of supervision of the team under your command, Lady Tsunade has demoted you to the rank of Chunin. This is a temporary measure until such time as your probationary supervisor deems you ready to return to the rank of Junin. At any time between then and now, you can and will be visited by your supervisor at any time of the day or night. You will report to your supervisor daily to receive any assignments that he has deemed appropriate for you at that time. Failure to do so can and will result in, in the loss of your status as a shinobi, your family fortunes, and the remainder of your family lands. Do you understand the terms of this decision? Uruka asked as he looked at the couple before him coolly. Sakura was stunned, but Sasuke was turning red with an ever-growing anger. Surely, Uruka-sensei, this is entirely too harsh of a punishment for an unsuccessful mission or two, Sakura reasoned, her confusion growing, but so was a rather bitter suspicion. It's a matter of character, Haruno, Uruka replied as he walked over to his son and picked him up from the ground, or the lack thereof. Junin hold a place of leadership within shinobi ranks and their actions, both on missions and in their private lives, are subject to review. I thought Kakashi had taught you about the importance of teamwork. Team members don't not stab one another in the back, he spat. So, just who is my supervisor, then, if I may ask? Sasuke inquired, his voice dripping with sarcasm. He felt his world sink when he saw the shark-like grin on Aruka's face. Me, he replied, killer intent rolling off him like waves of malice, and after what you have done, you had just better pray I don't have you listed as a missing nin for what you have done. So, this is about Naruto, huh? Sasuke barked as he sprung to his feet, his fist clenched and crumpling the scroll in his possession. That's me. Uruka's little son piped up as his father tried to suppress a smile at his child. Hush, now, Ruto. We're talking about your uncle Naruto, not you. Uruka said gently as he turned his attention back to the others. He gave me this, the little brown-haired boy said proudly as he brandished his wooden kanai that his favorite uncle had gotten him. What, is that bastard's pride hurt so much that he's crying to Tsunade to punish us? Is that his little, oof? Sasuke doubled over in pain as Uruka removed his fist from the Uchiha's stomach. Remember what I told you about cursing, Uchiha? Uruka seed as he took a step back and took in a calming breath before continuing. Naruto hasn't asked for anything, as well you know. So keep your mouth shut. Now, meet me at the academy first thing in the morning about your first assignment, afterwards you'll have to go help the farmers as previously ordered. And what happens if I refuse? Sasuke growled, his temper getting the best of him. Uruka raised one eyebrow and cast a look to Sakura and their child. Do you really want to become a missing nin again? Can you imagine what that would do to Sakura and your child? Would you want that life for them? Would you really like your son to grow up known as the son of a traitor? Is that any kind of life for a child? Uruka asked softly, causing Sasuke to back off and think about the consequences of his actions, or lack thereof. He glanced at Sakura and their child, and decided it would be best to control his temper and swallow his pride. No, Uruka-sensei, it's not. I'll do as you say, he replied, defeated. Uruka nodded as he turned with Ruto and began to walk off. Daddy, can we go see Unka Naruto again? I miss him, Ruto asked quietly as his father began to carry him from the training field. His question caused Sakura and Sasuke both to gasp in shock. Uruka sensei, do you know where Naruto is? Sakura asked hopefully. Uruka spun around quickly and glared at her incredulously. His jaw dropped as she continued. We haven't seen him since the baby was born and we all need to sit down and have a long family talk. 
Please, can you tell us where he is? You, you really don't know, do you? The scarred Chunin asked disbelievingly. Sakura watched as Aruka and Ruto both got quiet, sadness clearly evident in their eyes. Of course not, Aruka sensei. We've been looking for him since the day he stormed out, Sasuke replied, acting like it was the most obvious thing in the world. Unka Naruto is in the hospital, Ruto said as the training field got deathly quiet. A platinum blonde Kunoichi peeked around the door to see if anyone else was in the room other than the stricken occupant of the lone bed within. Seeing nobody else around, she sheepishly opened the door and shuffled over to the chair beside the bed. She chided herself for her timidness, for Ino Yamanaka was never timid. She faced life head on, ready to kick it in the balls if it gave her any lip. Or at least, that was the impression she gave the rest of the world. There was only one person on the planet that knew otherwise, and he was the one lying on the bed in a coma. Hey, Naruto, she whispered with a sad smile on her face as she sat down and reached over, taking his rough, still hand in her own slender one. She glanced around and made sure that no one else was around, fearing that everyone else knew her horrid little secret. She knew that was a silly thing to fear, for she knew that her loving father hadn't told anyone else of what he had found in Naruto's mind, as it pertained to herself. Ah crap, not her again. Kayubi grumbled deep within his cage. You'd think she'd give up on you, Kit. How are you doing today? She asked as if expecting an answer. When none was forthcoming, Ino sighed as she patted his hand. She looked sadly at his still face, noticing how peaceful he looked. She shook her head at the image that flashed through her mind. How the hell you think he is, idiot? He's in a fucking coma. Damn, you blondes are dense. The fox growled as a shudder ran throughout his great body. Daddy came home a week ago and told me about the mind dive he took to try to see what was wrong with you. She whispered as she thought about what all her father had seen in his mind. The two of them had a very long talk after her mother had gone to bed that night. Many tears were shed, many hugs were given, and several admonishments were traded before they had retired that night. He found out about, that night. That was her father? Oh shit. Kayubi barked as he called out to his container. Hey Kit, you really need to wake up. That mind walker was Blondie's father. Hey, Kit, I guess I should be mad at you for telling on me. She giggled a bit, trying her best to act as lighthearted as possible, but I guess it really wasn't your fault. I hear you furry little friend was to blame. Hey, bitch, I'm not little. The Kit soon snarled as he tried to flare his chakra, but failed miserably. Damn it, Kit. You gotta wake up because this chick's constant talking is driving me nuts. I never really thanked you for what you did for me, she whispered, still afraid that someone would walk up and hear what was going on, and that made you very special to me. Annoying most of the time, but special. Oh, gag me. If this shit keeps up, I'm gonna need an insulin shot. Uh, Kayubi moaned, feeling ill to his stomach. He made sure not to move too much, fearing what would happen. I'm sorry I haven't been around much this past week. I promise that I didn't forget about you. It's just, I was kinda afraid to show my face, you know? What are the odds that I'd be afraid to show my face anywhere, huh? It's like since daddy had discovered my, our secret, I was afraid everyone would know. I'm still kinda jumping at shadows. Stupid, isn't it? Sheesh, grumbled the fox, rolling his eyes at her little speech. I know that you never talked about the crap you went through growing up, but daddy told me about the hell you were put through as a kid, and... And, I'm so sorry, Naruto. I know I did some of that as kids. I, I just wish I was there for you back then, when we were kids. Ino stammered as the tears began to slide down her cheeks. The fox had no response for that comment. He merely stayed silent, though a low growl was beginning to build within his throat. You're such a great guy, Naruto. I just wished I had known that back then. Maybe, maybe you wouldn't have had to go through all that pain. Maybe I could have helped. Maybe, maybe you wouldn't have ended up here. Ino whispered that last part as she began to lift the veil, ever so slightly, from a hidden part of her heart. A part she had denied since that one night. Maybe, the fox agreed, but maybe if a frog had wings, he wouldn't kick his own ass when he jumps. Toads, Kayubi heard whispered, but it was so soft, it could have been a trick of the wind. Daddy shared some of the memories with me, the blonde Kunoichi continued which caused the fox to raise its eyebrows, but he said that there were some that were too, intense, for me. He said he didn't want me to go through the trauma. Well, ain't that just tough shit. They were too intense for the kid to go through, but guess what? 
It happened, bitch. Kayubi snarled, getting rather angry at the annoying voice that had come to haunt him. But I thought to myself, what would Naruto do to help a friend that was in real trouble? Ino pondered as she stood from the chair, looking down upon Naruto's still face while still holding his hand. Huh? The Kitsune wondered, not really sure what she was getting at. And I realized that you would do anything you could to help those who were, dear, to you. I knew you would walk through hell and back to help your precious people. She continued as she released Naruto's hand and placed it lovingly on the other. Oh, Kayubi muttered, preparing for the worst. He knew a headache was coming on. I can do no less, she proudly stated as she positioned her hands to perform her family's signature jutsu, Shintenshin no Jutsu. Ah crap, Kayubi barked as Ino's body fell to the floor with a resounding, thump. The sight before Ino was nothing like what she expected. Whereas the mindscape of most people reflected something peaceful and idyllic, Naruto's was far from it. Ino was shocked to see that she was standing in a sewer, and was knee-deep in fetid water. Looking to her left and right, she noticed huge pipes that ran the length of the sewer, going off and vanishing into the vast distance. The mind walker shuddered as she surveyed her surroundings, only to be stopped when she felt something cold and wet fall on her bare shoulders. Looking up, she saw the same sort of pipes running overhead, and unfortunately, they were leaking. Leaking what, she didn't know. Ew, she said as her imagination got the better of her, fearing what had dripped on her. She quickly turned and began to walk toward the closest light source, purposely ignoring the various opening to her left and right that appeared as she traveled further along. She had learned a long time ago to head toward the brightest light, because that was the center of the subject's mind, the resting place of the consciousness. What she hadn't noticed was the fact that the water level was getting lower and lower the closer she got to the light. Come on, Naruto. I know you're just ahead of me, hang on baby. Ino muttered as she took off in a run as soon as the water level had allowed her to, barreling toward the ever-beaconing, red-tinged light. The doorway grew larger and larger until it filled her view and she burst through it at top speed. What she saw before her stopped her in her tracks. What the hell? She wondered as she began to walk toward the massive set of iron gates that dominated the great cavern that she had stumbled upon. Ino could hear the sound of something huge taking great, ragged breaths on the other side. The closer she got, the more nervous she became, until she stood before the great gates as she stared at the paper seal that held the massive structures closed. Ino had never been so nervous before in her life as she peered between the bars to see what was lying in wait beyond. What the fuck do you want, bitch? A great voice rattled, shaking the floor of the sewer so greatly that Ino feared that she would fall on her butt. She let out a small shriek as a pair of huge, blazing eyes appeared out of the dark as she felt a hot wind wash over her. The horrible eyes locked onto her and seemed to bore right down into her soul. Are you here to hurt the kit? If so, you will make a tasty snack. Rest assured, none will hurt him again if I can help it. The kit? Who's this kid you're talking about? I'm here for Naruto. She squeaked as she fought to keep from running back to her own body and hiding under her bed, safe at home. She heard a rumble shake the cavern, something that was akin to a barking laugh. Stupid mortal. Just who the hell do you think I'm talking about? Whose head are you currently in? The voice growled as a set of great teeth shone in the fiery light. Ino's eyes grew huge as her mind tried to shut down. Her father hadn't really told her about this, but he hadn't known she was going to dive into Naruto's mind in the first place. Naruto's, right? Ino whispered as realization struck her like a thunderbolt. She stepped closer to the cage until her body was actually standing between two of the bars, as she continued to look up into those horrible eyes. So that means you're... Yes, say it, the rumble continued as the eyes took on a hungry look. Saliva began to slide down the monstrous fangs and drip to the floor beyond. A loud scraping began to be heard, like that of a steel blade on metal plate. Q. Q, Q. Ino stammered as she looked another step forward, her hair swaying in the hot wind that came and went in great waves. Say it, the voice yelled with such volume that it could have shattered mountains. Ino fell to one knee to keep from being blow backwards out of the cage, the same cage that she hadn't really noticed that she had walked into. Kayubi, Ino gasped as she stood back up and dusted off her knee and began to walk toward the voice. Yes, Kayubi no Kitsune. Kayubi no Yoko, the nine-tailed fox, king of the biju, lord of the great-tailed beasts, lord of demons, I am all that and more. 
Now, just who the fuck are you? Kayubi answered as he watched the blonde before him continue to walk toward him, never knowing exactly what kind of danger she was in. Either she was very brave or very stupid. I, I'm Ino, Ino Yamanaka. The mind walker replied as she continued her trek toward the terrifying eyes. Kayubi's eyes grew wide in surprise. Ah, oh, you're the blondie. Kayubi barked, laughing his tails off. God, you're so annoying. I haven't had a decent rest since you started talking to my idiot of a jailer. Ino bristled at her reception. Hey, you bastard fox. What the hell gives you the right to talk to me like that? Ino yelled as she walked even closer toward the blazing eyes. Her fist raised like she was going to bash his head in. If it wasn't for me, you would be dead. A great crashing threw her from her feet. What? How dare you speak to me so? If it wasn't for the fucking people in this forsaken village, we wouldn't even be in this situation. The Kayubi snarled, tearing great chunks out of the floor of his cell. After all the hell you people put him through, oh shit. Kit, I'm sorry. What? What's wrong? Ino shouted as she sprinted toward the voice before coming into a large circle of light and screeching to a halt at the sight before her. You're the Kayubi? What? I've already told you who I am. Kayubi snarled as he nuzzled something between his front paws. Ino just stared at the sight before her. The great and terrible Kayubi no Kitsun wasn't as great and terrible as she had been led to believe. The beast was huge, that was for sure, but it was nowhere near as large as he appeared to be when she was outside the cage. Without his tails, which were laying limply on the cage floor, Kayubi was no longer than about 60 feet long, and since he was laying on his belly on the cage floor, his head measured about 13 feet or so off the ground. His fur varied in color from a deep red to a pale orange, and as she began to walk around him, she noticed a huge gash in his side that seemed to pour blood. She followed the trail of blood down and noticed that it pooled in the bottom of the cage, coloring the water a deep crimson color. She began to walk back to the front of the tailed beast as his head swiveled and followed her every move. When she came toward his front paws, which seemed to be shielding something, his head lashed at her with a huge snap of its jaws. Hey, what was that for? Ino bellowed as the Kayubi pulled its head back and nuzzled whatever it was hiding between its paws. You are not to come any closer to him, do you understand? I will not have him harmed again. I forced that last mind walker to live through the hell the kid went through, and I have no problems doing the same to you. The fox growled as his eyes locked onto Ino's. The platinum blonde's temper got the better of her as she placed her hands on her hips and barked back, forgetting she was yelling at the most powerful of the biju. If I was here to harm him, don't you think I would have done that outside his mind, dumbass? Ino yelled, causing Kayubi to smirk inwardly. I came here to find out what was wrong with my friend and to find out why in the world you aren't doing your job and healing him up. And that other mindwalker was my daddy, and he was here to help Naruto, too. Not doing my job? Now see here, you little snack, I'm doing everything I can for the kid. I'm trying to protect him from you assholes while holding his mind together. I'm sending as much chakra as I can to heal him, but it's kinda hard seeing how I'm kinda fucked up right now. Kayubi sniped back, causing a small whimper to come from between his paws. Hush now, it's alright, kid, I'm not going to let her hurt you. Eno, a small, childlike voice said so softly that it would have been easy to miss. Eno gasped, her eyes growing wide as something sounded vaguely familiar about that voice. Is that, is that Naruto? She asked quietly as she stepped slowly toward Kayubi's paws. He refused to stop her as she drew closer and closer and finally saw the small boy laying there on the ground, wrapped up in the fur of the fox's paws. The little boy could have been no older than two or three years old, with spiky blonde hair and light whisker marks of his cheeks. Naruto? Eno? The little boy asked as he opened his eyes sleepily and looked at Ino with the cutest, bright blue eyes she had ever seen. He cocked his head slightly then burst into tears as he reached out for the platinum blonde. Ino's heart broke as she reached between the fox's paws and scooped him up in her arms and cradled him the best she could. Shish, it's okay, little one, it's okay, Ino whispered as she held the toddler close and rocked him back and forth, doing everything she could to comfort the child. Looking over Naruto's head, she looked up at the Kayubi and asked, what happened? I'm not sure, Kayubi muttered as he watched the young woman before him comfort the toddler, but near as I can tell, his mind shattered. He reverted back to a younger age, before he could remember any of the bullshit they put him through. Eno, I missed you. 
Baby Naruto sniffled as he buried his face in her long hair. You went away for a long time. Did, did I do something wrong? A tear slid down Ino's face when she heard the sadness in his voice. No, you didn't do anything wrong, baby. I wanted to be here for you. I was just worried about something silly. I'm so sorry. Can you forgive me? Baby Naruto nodded his head and continued to hold onto her for dear life. What can we do to get him back to normal? I really don't know, Kayubi replied as he looked upon the two mortals before him. Normally, I would be able to heal his body, but this gash in my side is slowing me down seriously. As for his mind, I don't know. His was the strongest mind I had ever known, despite how idiotic he liked to act sometimes. Can you tell me who would be strong enough to deal with me inside them, and then survive all the insults, beatings and assassination attempts that this child has gone through? Then what can we do? Ino asked, still rocking the young boy in her arms. His sniffles had disappeared as he fell asleep on her shoulder. Wait, you said his mind shattered? Where are the pieces? I don't see them laying around here anywhere. Through that portal on my right, Kayubi replied as he pointed a claw toward a dark passageway. Ino gulped silently as she stared into a void that was darker than any night she had ever known. That is where I sent the last mind walker, but I guess he just wasn't strong enough. The kid's memories overwhelmed him. Whoa, Ino mumbled. If her father wasn't strong enough to keep himself from being overwhelmed, then what chance did she have? Ino quickly shook her head and reminded herself that she was here for Naruto, and she was bound and determined to find a way to bring him back. Whoa, indeed, Kayubi rumbled. Nodding her head, Ino walked back toward the huge fox and placed the small toddler back between the beast's huge paws. That action quickly woke Naruto up and caused him to cry out in protest. No, no go, Ino. Baby Naruto wailed as he continued to reach out for her. The blonde Kunoichi felt her heart trying to break at the sadness reflected in the little boy's eyes. Shush, it's okay, I won't be gone for long, I promise. Ino said soothingly as she stroked Naruto's hair, quickly quieting his protests. I'm just going to go over there for a few minutes and see if I can do anything to help you get better, okay? K. Naruto pouted as he quickly snuggled into the reddish fur that grew between the pads on Kayubi's paws, falling into a peaceful sleep. Ino would have thought it was a cute scene if she didn't know for a fact that the Kayubi was a huge demon known for its extreme destruction. She turned and began her trek toward the passageway when she stopped, spun on her heel, placed her hands on her hips, and proceeded to yell at the fox. Hey, wait just one damn minute here. If his mind is accessible to you in your cage, then just why in the hell haven't you gone in there and fixed him? The blonde barked, extremely angered. She quickly blanched when she felt an intense wave of killer intent heading in her direction. Do not raise your voice at me, mortal. Kayubi snapped, his blazing eyes doing their best to incinerate Ino on the spot. If it was within my power to do so, I would have reconstructed the kid's mind to hate and destroy this village. Alas, that is not the case. As it is, due to my wound, I barely have enough energy to heal the kid and to protect him. Plus, it ain't easy trying to keep a three-year-old from wandering off and getting lost within this accursed place. Your wound? Ino asked as she moved back toward Kayubi's side, until she came to the gash in his side that she had noticed earlier. Looking closer, it appeared to her as if it had been sliced open by a rather large sword. The blood she had seen pouring from it earlier was, in fact, the Kayubi's chakra. He was losing it in rather copious amounts. How? she asked, amazed that anything could have harmed the Kayubi, especially since it was sealed within Naruto. The kid, Kayubi answered as he looked down upon the sleeping bundle between his paws. He gave that to me the same time he gave you that scar on your belly. He wasn't actually trying to harm me, just stop his own pain. He wasn't exactly in his right mind at the time. Yeah, no shit, Ino mumbled as she charged her hands with healing chakra and ran them over the wound, with no result. It is of no use, Blondie, the kid soon grumbled as he felt something strange stir within his massive chest, that is pure demonic chakra pouring out. It will easily overwhelm yours. Hmm, the kunoichi pondered as she poured over the medical knowledge that Tsunade had forced into her brain during her training. A spark of an idea appeared as she remembered an ancient technique that had been used to close wounds in the past. That just might work, what are you going on about? Shouldn't you be trying to fix the kid's mind? The fox growled, only to yelp as Eno swatted his hindquarters with a giant, 
rolled up newspaper that appeared out of thin air. The power of the mind is a wondrous thing. Shut up, stupid fox. Eno admonished as she closed her eyes and concentrated, until an 18-inch long, curved needle appeared in her hand. Now, listen up. All this chakra of yours that's pouring out, can you control it? Kayubi quirked an eyebrow at the weird question. Mostly, I think. However, once it's out and mixed up with the kits, it's out of my paws. Eno nodded before giving the fox some strange instructions. All right then, what I need you to do is to form your chakra into a rope about a half an inch thick and to keep feeding it to me until I tell you to stop, okay? Kayubi turned his head and looked at the strange girl at his side. Just what do you plan on doing? He inquired as he watched Eno grab the chakra rope, only to jerk her hand back as the demon's life force burned her. Thinking quickly, Eno formed thick gloves and a surgical suit around her body before grabbing the rope once more and threaded it through the needle in her hand. Or as Kayubi thought of it, a harpoon. Okay, this may sting a bit, but I bet a big, bad demon lord like you can handle a little pain, now can't you? Eno smirked, watching the hackles rise on the kitsune's back. Taking a deep breath, Eno plunged the needle into the torn skin of the Kayubi and pulled it through before pulling to the other side and repeating the process. The Kayubi let out a little yelp each time the needle punctured his skin. Okay, I guess not. Does the little baby want a lollipop when nurse Eno's done? Stupid, insolent mortals. First, the fourth, then the brat, now you. What did I do to deserve this? He muttered then winced as the torture continued on. Eno grinned as she continued to work on the great fox. You want an itemized list, or just the highlights, the blonde asked cheekily as she tugged the separated skin closer and closer together, doing her best to take care of her patient. Just, just shut up, the Kayubi whimpered as tears formed in the corner of his eyes. Between the pain in his side and the weird feeling in his chest, it was taking its toll and leaving behind a very confused fox. How, how much longer? Just about done, she replied as she climbed higher and higher to accomplish her task. She felt the tremors going through her patient, which really threw her for a loop, thinking that the demon who had attacked her village so many years prior would be this shaken up by getting stitches. She had seen small children handle it better. There, done, feel better now? It's over? He asked as he watched her leap from his side, the surgical suit and gloves vanishing in puff of smoke. She patted his side and took notice that the flow of chakra had stopped, except the flow that kept sustaining the stitches. Eno nodded her head as she walked back to the front of the beast and placed her hands on her hips. He continued to gaze at her as the weird feeling in his chest continued to increase. What was this feeling? It seemed familiar, like it was something he had felt before, but not directly. Yes, it's over, you big baby. Are you feeling any better yet? Eno chided as she bent over Kayubi's paws to check up on Naruto. He continued to look at her strangely as she stood back up and cocked an eyebrow, looking rather confused. What? Yes, I am, feeling better, Kayubi replied as he tried his best to understand what was going on. What was this feeling? Gratitude? Why would she do this for him? Just to help her friend? Naruto would have survived despite the wound on Kayubi. Didn't the little snack know that? Surely, she did, so why? 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 I, thank you. I wonder though, why did you do this for me? You know the kid would have survived without having to treat me, right? Well, Eno said as she looked down at her feet for a second before returning his gaze. You see, I don't like seeing others hurting. That's one reason I trained as a medic, to help others out. Not that I'm any good at it, but I still try. The fox looked at her quizzically. Don't sell yourself short, young one, Kayubi rumbled. You did an exemplary job. So, you didn't do this for the kid, but, for me? Eno looked at him like he was an idiot. Of course I did it for you. Like I said, I don't like seeing anyone hurting. Is that such a strange concept to understand? The blonde asked, shaking her head. Kayubi barked out a short laugh. For a demon? Yes it is, he answered back, and laughed some more at the look on Eno's face. Come here, blondie, I have something for you. Uh, okay, Eno said cautiously as she stepped a little closer to the fox but stopped when he raised one tail and whipped it around, pointing straight at her stomach. By the way, my name is, Eno, not, Blondie. You know something, Blondie? I like you. You remind me a whole lot of the kid. Now, hold still for a sec. Kayubi ordered as the very tip of his tail began to quiver ever so slightly, drawing a rather intricate design across the scar on Eno's stomach. 
When he was finished, he sent his breath to wash over her, causing the design and the scar to both vanish before Ino's startled eyes. What was that? She asked, rather dumbfounded. Kayubi grinned as best as a huge fox could. A kindness for a kindness, he replied, shocking the young blonde. Your scar is gone, hidden in the seal that I just placed on you. Now, don't get upset. It wasn't an evil seal, all it does is hide the scar, and links you to the kid. What? What makes you think I want to be linked to him? I don't think of Naruto like that. Ino bellowed, then quickly lowered her voice so as not to wake the sleeping toddler. Bullshit. Don't you think I would have access to his memories? Or that I don't know that you have looked after him since this crap started? I may be a demon, but I have lived untold millennia, so I know when someone cares greatly for someone else. Listen to me before you protest yet again. All the seal does is let the one know when the other is in trouble. You two have been looking after each other off and on for years now, so what's the big deal? Said the kid soon as he watched the blonde before him visibly calm down. Alright, now I think it's time to try to get the brat's mind back together, don't you? Uh, yeah, Ino answered as she looked toward the great void once more. Kayubi saw a slight shudder ripple through her being at the thought of entering such a daunting place. Listen, if you get into trouble in there, just send a little chakra into your seal and I will see what I can do to help you out, okay? Remember, the kid needs you right now. Kayubi whispered as best as he could, which wasn't much of one, but what can you do when you're a huge demon fox? Right, she said as turned and, with one last look toward the sleeping toddler, marched into the dark, intimidating void beyond. That's all for now if you enjoy it then please like share and do comments.